Is the countdown done? It's done. I believe so. <laughs> Wait, how do I send you a link? Private chat. There we go. Private chat. All right, there's Ooh. a link. All right, we're here, guys. There's one person watching, and that one person is me. So <laughs> today we're doing a digital marketing roundtable with a couple of really fine Latinos. Really, really cool cats here. Cool gatos. And um, yeah, let's go around and uh, do some quick introductions. So let's start with you, Karen. Ladies first. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Karen, as you know. I am a digital marketer focusing on the area of web marketing and conversion rate optimization and working on a lot of UX related initiatives for both my job and clients as well. I think that's the best way to sum it up. So you do a lot of SEO as well, right? Yeah, I do SEO, more editorial SEO lately, because before I used to do more like SEO for clients and smaller businesses and things like that. But now it's limited to like editorial SEO. All right. That's really cool. What about you, Eduardo? How are you doing today? Good. Ecstatic. Um, I would say my name is Eduardo. Um, cool. I like to consider myself a storyteller that's now transitioning to digital marketing. So a lot of the stuff that I do, it involves creating more in the documentary space. And it's a lot of it, it's within the social justice movements. So think about it, any injusticia, I'm trying to document it, trying to spread you know, those, those stories along and, and hopefully we make change. That's pretty awesome. You know, you said you're a storyteller first. I would argue the best marketers are storytellers. I think I that's, that's like uh, everybody asks me, like, how do you get to like next level in your career or whatever? I'm just like, get better at communicating, get better at storytelling in general, really. Yeah. Right. Um, I encourage you guys to push this out into your social so we can get more people involved. We're going to take a quick break to put promote all of this everywhere i'm going to post it in the group and things like that but in the meantime Ooh. i think i should introduce myself so if you guys are following me hopefully you are following me and if you're not well welcome welcome to my ghetto show um <laughs> my name is cynthia i am a digital marketing strategist specifically specializing in digital advertising um, leveraging tools and platforms like Google advertising and Facebook advertising to scale e-commerce businesses. I also do this as a coach and as a consultant. I teach other freelancers to level up in their career, to demand more money and to develop the processes and systems that they need to get to the next level of their career. That's what I do. I'm working on that pitch. What do you guys think about that? That was very well thought out. Yeah. I kind of just like went for it. You know, I think it's the wine. Man. You know, talking is really a tool. Oh, sorry, sorry. Talk talking is one of those things where you need to constantly practice like <laughs> pitching and things like that. Cause because you know, I told you guys that I'm doing more like talks and whatnot. Like you you really need to practice your elevator pitch and how you introduce yourselves. Oh, I yeah. have like my freelance clients do that. And I'm just like, bro, you need to write like a mini bio and then a long bio so that you can use when you're pitching like conferences and things like that and just have that ready. Like I have a folder of all like my speaking stuff, like a my yeah. face and then all the, like my bio that makes me sound really cool. And then a short form, all of it oh, together. Did, did you actually wrote those bios or do you find yourself having difficulty talking about yourself? Oh, it was actually a huge mental hurdle. I worked with it on my, like my, with my uh, communications coach and I noticed that I really, really hate like quote unquote bragging about myself. Oh yeah. But it's not bragging. It's literally marketing. That's what we do. Yeah. Right. So I kind of repositioned it and I'm just like, Hey, I'm just telling the truth in a very positioned way. Yeah. I mean, like I'm not lying. <laughs> it's, I'm really not. It's just, you know, you, you, people, I feel like women have this a lot. Like, it's easier for men to be bold a lot of the times. Maybe maybe not Latinos as much. I don't know. I think it's yeah. uh, immediately you'll get some, like, oh, why are you so full of yourself? Like, oh, it sounds like you're bragging or something like that. 
And now I realize when someone says that, I'm just like, that's really great. I've grown a lot. Like I'm headed in a really good direction now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas that's usually, before, that's usually like telling of themselves. You know how like you know when you get haters and trolls, it's like a, a projection of themselves than than of the actual person that they're talking about. I feel like that's that's the case as well. Yeah, yeah, they're just projecting their insecurities onto you. That's actually like a big thing that I think we talked about that last time when we were all together that we've dealt with within our families and then with our circles right mm. yeah. how's that how's that how's that happen for for each of you ladies first <laughs> Aaron, you're always in the hot seat they're just like I always am, but the, the, the... Wait, 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 before you go in where's your white claw what flavor are you drinking oh shoot yeah that's true oh lemon oh i thought you had I mean, mango yeah, mango is the best one. I mean. Yeah, mango is the best one. Like, honestly, if you're going to drink White Claw, it should be mango. Okay, you need to chill. No. If that's the case, just, like, put some vodka with club soda and spritz a lemon on it. Honestly, this is the first honestly, time right? I'm lemon. This is the first time I'm tasting a lemon. I don't All think right, how do you feel, Verdict? This is literally a Sprite. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. She said it. If you're going to drink White Claw... Just drink bright. mango. <laughs> Just yeah. drink mango. So, Karen, how how have you dealt with haters? Like starting a completely new career path, then literally, literally everyone, or compared to everyone in your family and in your friend group. Um. Here's the thing, though. I think even pre pre career pre all this digital marketing stuff, I had already kind of tuned out the voices of other people because. Pre-entering the marketing world, I had these decisions about going to college and stuff and where, you know, there's a lot of pressure to do this thing or to do the other thing. For example, my my mother wanted me to do this the full year bachelor's degree and like become super, do everything by the book. And my dad wanted me to like leave the world and go preach about God's word in like remote Ecuador. So it's no, like no. you learn to you learn to you like you realize or at least I realize I don't think I had the problem where what that you mentioned Cynthia of like haters and really all that because like I think by the time I had entered like I guess the marketing field I had already known like I know I'm going to stay true to myself people are going to be crazy people are going to be you know pushing you to do this thing to do the other thing so I don't think I really dealt with that as much as I've heard other people um dealing with like the the pressure to to do this or, or the um i guess the insecurities that they're projecting on yourself like i think by by the time i yeah i entered the marketing field it was just a thing of like well just it's almost like i guess putting a headset on and you're like tuning everything out and you know what's what makes you happy and you do it and who knows even if you like you screw up um it's on you and you take responsibility for it but like yeah, I don't think I really dealt with that as much as other people that I've heard. So mature. So mature. I think you just, like, had a really, really unique upbringing, though. <laughs> 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 That's really yeah. unique. But so have I. But I'm curious about you, Eduardo. What, how have you dealt with haters when you're transitioning into a completely mm -hmm. new career? So you transition from video editing, kind of, like, becoming, I would say, like, a media artist right yeah, content, creator. Video, content creator no artist sounds so much more sexier so you are an artist you know <laughs> and then you transitioned into more digital marketing and you kind mm -hmm. of infusing the two at this point really nicely so yeah. how is that transition like for you and then dealing with like yeah. all the your environment and just the fact that it's completely different for them yeah i mean i'm not trying to say that we're all special but i think we all kind of i think we're one, I think we mashed up together really nicely because like we just so randomly met, but I think we have like our mentality so alike in a way. We're the so, Latino squad. Probably. I mean, honestly, Morphing I think squad. if you hear me talk, they probably, oh, you had a different upbringing than most, right? But um, I would say that even before I began like, oh, I want to get into digital marketing and like storytelling, like I formally studied architecture and I was en route to becoming an architect and I was like, trying to go to grad school and do that, right? So uh, my journey really began in that, in the, in the construction field kind of thing. And then it evolved because I was like, I don't want to just be the, not to be an ass, but like, 
um, the average Mexican at a construction site, you know, like I want to make sure that like, because my parents told me like you're in this country, you came to get a degree. You came to be a better person, a better human than us kind of thing. So for me, it was like my only job was school. So for me, it was architecture. I loved it. Um, I, I did see myself as an artist before I went into that. And then I was like, I don't know, I'm a designer now. I solve people's problems. I make whatever, you know, however I digitize, draw these instructions. It's for someone's better well life or whatever, right? So mm-hmm. it was more so in the like designing better things for better people kind of thing. And um, I have a question for you, Eduardo. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to make a broadcast on my IG story. So you mm-hmm. you guys continue this dang conversation. Right. Hold on. I had a question because I know you had mentioned this, Eduardo, where you were talking about architecture and that you had, you know, studied that. Do you think there's any part of like your learning like the course material and everything that it took to be an architect, like did that carry over to your career now as I guess a sort of tech media person, marketer? Do you think there's anything that there's lessons and learnings that are transferable? Um, hmm, that's interesting. I believe so. I mean, I think with anything that you do, not only just the soft skills, the things you get, you know, like talking to people, being like getting your time management on point, making sure you're crafty. I mean, I'll kind of equate it. If we're going to make a comparison, it's almost like the same way digital marketers need to be so like always looking into the future, looking at the latest tech, seeing how like they can fit in new workflows to their new work, you know, like how it can help all this thing. So like, it's always actively learning. It's the same thing with us. Like we're always constantly trying to get like better materials, like, you know, sourcing different, you know, from different places, making sure it's sustainable making sure like everything kind of fits in properly. So we're always talking to reps. We're always talking to manufacturers. We're always trying to keep on the latest things. Um, and if if you're not, then you become kind of like the snail in the, in, in the world, in, at least in that world, in the design world. And then if you don't have the credibility, like if you don't have the years or the, you know, the, the branding essence uh, of what you do, you almost have to be like on it, right? So for to, me, when I was, go ahead. So you said you have to brand yourself as an architect, or are you talking about your the career on the marketing side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, both, right? I think, um, but in architecture, like for me, I had a different role than just the traditional. Um, mm-hmm. I did went up the ladder and stuff like that, but I specialized really quickly, um, just due to the fact that I knew software. You know, it's kind of this, like. I'm sure other people know like how to run ads amazingly. And there's just like one little thing they're amazing at. Right. And they get paid a ton of money to be consultants. Um, Kind of the same thing. Like I was doing right. Cynthia, um, I was doing a ton of uh, work that really involved more marketing. So I was like the guy that was doing the beautiful renderings. I was making sure that like we did like we call them like basically asthmas and like sun arrays and stuff like that. But it's basically like tracking the sun, making sure like the orientation, the building design is actually most optimal for like the location, time and place, you know, depending if it's like, it's really cold or if it's really warm there, making sure that like, we're just designing the building. So we're saving as much energy, which obviously saves a lot of money um, in the land, you know, say in 120, 200 years of that building's lifespan. So, um, I quickly then, instead of doing like the regular, like, you know, I did red lines or like what you, what you do as like, a, they basically call it a CAD monkey, which is like, you get the instructions yeah. like, like marked up and someone's like, okay. And then like, they go and the, they spent their whole, basically their whole life, their whole twenties, just making corrections on a drawing where I was more so like, I got involved with like early design stages. I got to meet with some of the clients. I got to do some of the walkthroughs. I got a lot of liberty as far as like designing concepts because sometimes like you don't, it's not about like um, designing the right one, right? It's almost like basically providing a bunch of ideas and then being able to have like this creative brief. And then just like, it's almost like exploration because a lot of the times, and I mean, we know this clearly uh, when a client tells you like, this is what I want, um that's not really what they need yeah yeah yeah. almost a hundred times like percent of the time is never the you know so 
you almost have to dig deeper and yeah and quick depending. question go ahead was that in the states or in mexico it was here yeah it was in oh milwaukee. and that was in milwaukee you were working with an advertising firm that's really cool yeah yeah so I was basically doing all their advertising within the architecture firm so which i didn't know yeah. i mean i didn't know that that was such a thing because we had people doing marketing and people writing posts and you know like i didn't even know about seo back then um but there were, we had people doing that but since i was like the creative i guess you know like i had like all the fancy little gadgets and stuff because i'm a very hardware person they were like oh you can you can just like do this in photoshop right or you can like do this little logo in illustrator and i was like yeah sure like so i was basically creating a lot of the digital assets yeah. without even knowing what i was I have doing. another i have another question for you how have those skill set transferred over into digital marketing if at well, all immensely. i mean yeah. i basically hopped over the curve you know and that's why i i like to call myself a storyteller not a content creator because yeah there is content creation that i'm able to do mm -hmm. but i don't want to be pigeonholed into like a commodity way of just oh yeah you're just an asset person right because I feel that what we bring to the table um, is not just the, the things that we can craft physically with our keyboards. It's like what's up here. Um, that's why I actually call myself like that, that's for me the the difference between a technician and a strategist, whereas a strategist, I'm coming up from the end to end planned. I don't necessarily do implementation. And that's why I charge like a consulting fee. That's why. You know, I'm starting to just charge now, just like one off strategy uh, sessions and then actually just launching campaigns and then offloading it to some other media buyer because I don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to deal with the day to day implementations. Um, I more or less really enjoy building out the customer personas, building out their offers, building out their quote unquote funnel. It's something we hear a lot. You know, I like mm -hmm. doing all of that, mapping out the entire user journey. That's so much more fun for me. It's more creative. Yeah. I mean, that's the same way I, I love doing storyboarding and like the documentary space is still like, you gotta be so on your toes, especially, I mean, the, the stuff that we deal with, like we, we do a lot of like the police brutality, a lot of like the, you know, like criminal shit and like, sorry to curse, but like, it's a lot of the, no, I've been fucking stuff, cursing like, time. Oh my God, something happened. Like he just came out of jail. Oh, they just fired this person. And you gotta be like, you gotta be ready to deploy. You know, you almost have to be always on it just in case because it's not like a fictional yeah you know? it sounds so, like like journalism type shit it is, what, it is, is that, it what are you doing is that what you're doing now are you working with the advertising firm are you are you your own advertising kind of or media company right yeah so mm -hmm. i have my own small media company um and then i work with other media companies like friends of mine and then we basically assemble teams um that like depending on the project we might actually go work as a whole um or we just you know like be, be, kind of do our own thing so um what i do personally i still do a lot more of the awareness content creation for some small to medium-sized businesses mm -hmm. um i like to you know kind of like my little spiel is like you know i like helping people basically tell their stories better right like share their yeah. moments better um and i I'm almost always working with the brand driven stuff. So I don't like talking about, you know, how like, cause for me, I mean, as a consumer, the way I think about life, I'm like, yeah, that's great. I can figure out if this product is really made for me or not. Mm -hmm. I think I can decide for that by mm -hmm. reading reviews, by, you know, making sure you have all that stuff in place. But when it comes to the content itself, like I want to talk, I want to know your why's. I want to know the reasons why you begin to try to target me in the first place. Like, what really made you create this mm -hmm. and like why is it going to benefit the world right and how you see it and mm -hmm. i think a lot of people don't move with that or like they don't know how to explain that within their marketing um, yeah i think that's like the hardest part for performance marketers tying the brand driven stuff and how do you because because you uh, know there's importance for both i think yeah. the problem with artists or like two top of funnel stuff is they think only that and right. it's, you know, like they think only that and they're unable to tie it to real world metrics that actually move the needle for your business. Exactly. They're unable to develop that kind of language even to talk about it. Like, you know, the whole reason, um, I, like when we go through discovery calls with a client, first thing I'm asking them, and I really want to understand this is like, well, what's the story behind your brand? 
you know like what's the story behind it because mm -hmm. that's that to me develops so much material that we can use for advertising in general okay. or like even i personally don't do like video and whatever like long form type stuff mm -hmm. i do like mini ads here and there and um but if i wanted to provide direction if the client wanted to hire like a video production team you know i can provide that high level direction like we really okay something that we haven't explored yet is, is telling the story about the business the brand story in x y and z kind of way and that's mm -hmm. something that we can use as like an overall like awareness or video views campaign that we can then retarget everyone who's hit like 25 percent of the video we can retarget them with the direct to sale ad so exactly. unfortunately like that's well that's my approach and that's why i say like um a brand driven performance marketer and that's what that really means to me um and what that means the end consumer unfortunately most advertisers or most marketers in the space like digital marketers they're they can't do one of the right they can't find the balance so was, go ahead so i was wondering because you know hearing you guys talk about these things is like refreshing honestly but i think me living in b2b world i feel like it's such a different space where it's like storytelling your why is like what it's like that is so out of the realm of like what we do in b2b marketing like i'm curious mm -hmm. on your guys' thoughts like do you guys think that maybe the b2b space should be marketing more like the way that cons the consumer side does because i see the benefits to that but i also see obviously very different like behavioral trends on the b2b side when you're looking to like market your business whether it's through advertising whether it's through like just simple seo like I don't, I'm curious on your guys' thoughts on the B2B space. I think there are two different strategies, right? When you're you're marketing direct to consumer, which is my bread and butter and what I super duper enjoy because I get to get I get to get really in the psyche of the end user and the consumer. I really get to understand what are their pain points. I really like I really delve into it, right? Whereas with B2B, you I'm a busy like for example, if okay, so Glassdoor Okay, I don't know what products Glassdoor does. Uh, let's say, oh, actually, no, I do. Okay, so Glassdoor, maybe your sales team is like looking to onboard um, other agencies that want them to feature like their job applications specifically on their site. Mm -hmm. You have to speak, like their time is limited. You know, it, it's like they're not, when their behavior is so different, like if I'm a marketing manager and I'm looking to see where can we post like for a job for a marketing coordinator, um, my behaviors on Instagram and like Facebook are completely different because right. I'm like, I don't want to deal with work right now. I just, I'm like, I'm here to like shop for fucking unicorn panties right now. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like think about my job. Yeah. So <laughs> it's really tough. Like the, even the, the areas in which you go about marketing. I think you can, I think B2B marketing is missing out on like the storytelling aspect of marketing and, and getting real bare bones into the branding aspect of it. But I also think it's like the same tactics won't exactly work because the behavior and, and the drive is different. It's right. really different. So I don't know. This is why I don't even like B2B marketing. It feels so dry cycle yeah it's like it's definitely less exciting less flashy but um at the same time to me that's like it's like a big question mark sometimes to me it's like how is this audience going to react to this like how because i feel like with consumers it's I, I don't know for my side because i work consumers i feel like it's easier to say like yeah you know you're gonna buy with your emotions you're gonna do this like it's i feel like it's it's easier to put like a label on them almost whereas on the b2b side it's like yeah you're 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 driven by your metrics by your case studies by this by that so that's yeah. what makes Honestly, to me. I've, I've heard like arguments and for the four people watching right now, we're just really getting into it, into our different unique experiences within marketing. Karen is talking about B2B. Um, Eduardo and I really delve into like direct to consumer space. I'm an advertiser. I, I mean, Facebook is strongly direct to consumer. Google, you can argue. But 
with, um, I think a lot of uh, what I was saying, the argument that people have with B2B marketing is that it should have a more human humanistic approach. The argument is that at the end of the day, you're marketing to humans and you're marketing to people. So I think, I think there are, you can see what all of your competitors are doing, right? And then yeah. just try to do something different. And especially if you have like the budget to do so, like why not try? I think I think that's the beauty of marketing. It's like testing, testing to see what works and testing mm -hmm. new creative avenues. And if you have, if, I guess like you can say in a way with B2B, there's so much more to do and to test because mm -hmm. everyone's too afraid to, yeah. to like dip their toe into like DTC type shit. But <laughs> five people watching now, uh, five people that are watching, Go ahead, ask us questions. We got some really great digital marketers in here. Karen specializing in SEO, Eduardo specializing in video content, and me specializing in paid media, digital advertising, Google and Facebook. Um, also, like this video and like, can you subscribe, please? And even if, if you, even don't, if you don't, Karen's going to cry. Even if, look, honestly, I will fake cry for you. But even Karen if you don't cry. Have a question, even if you don't have a question, just post like hey on the comments so we can needs to be told hey guys yeah. you know like, like we're, i need social interaction guys so is eduardo right karen needs social yeah. interaction can you just can you just say hey right stop being a bad person just say hey anyways i got some question here for you guys this is a digital round yeah. table it's my yeah. first oh we got a we got a comment by ricky jean marie question for you karen Oh, this is about the new update. I've been getting a lot of these. Um, I got a question earlier and they asked us if that, how does that affect advertising? Anyways, let me ask the question. Question for Karen. Has the new Google Core update hurt any of your clients in terms of SEO? And if not, did they help any of them? I've heard a lot of the latter. Curious to hear what you have to say about it. So to be completely honest, uh, my... Most recent clients, I am not doing SEO for, but I can't speak in terms. Oh, can I speak about work? Wait, what? Can you? You're not. I thought you were doing SEO for your clients right now. I was. Uh, so right now, I'm onboarding a client where, like, right now, we're not even at the SEO part yet because, like, mm. so, like, we just need to scrap the whole thing and even start with UX and stuff. So, I'm excited to get to that part with this client, but. Mm. At this moment, I do not have clients that um, that I'm specifically doing like a lot of SEO work for. So I, I couldn't be able to say. But honestly, what I can say on um, other sites that I'm managing, um, I honestly haven't really seen a huge shift. For us, it's basically like, the seasonality the, what's the biggest thing with the biggest like impact right now is just because it is the time of year where things are slowing down um at least on the b2b world like that is the biggest thing we're just seeing as as usual which is just a drop in traffic a drop in like all search engine activity to our mm -hmm. websites and that's what i'm honestly seeing more than more than this uh Google core update, but I'm, I don't know. I'm still analyzing these things. So I guess Trey said, it. Trey said his clients are like killing it right now. I know that's what I'm higher than ever. Mm -hmm. That's what because I heard. Yeah. Because the new core update just favors good content and like just good, all good practices. So it sounds like it's just weeding out all the shitty practices, all the black hat crap and yeah. rewarding all the white hat stuff, just creating good content, good user experience for Google. That's why I'm saying like it's that's these things are like honestly it's not like a like wow like what this just happened this like yeah. we saw this coming guys like we saw yeah. this coming we this is user sent like user centric great content like I, I don't know like I don't know what else what other way to put it like I don't think we could be too shocked. I think people are constantly looking for shortcuts with things. Like I notice it even within their career and it's just like, oh, yeah. you got to Yeah. Like I feel, well, like as I was saying before, people kind of skip the whole, it's not necessarily, I'm not, I'm not, this is not an argument necessarily for storytelling, but at least understanding the client's entire mission and their goals and who the end user is yeah. like that to me is brand. It's like how the customer and the client feels about 
what it is that you provide and people kind of just miss out on that and go straight to like the sale and like let's run yeah. some ads to this bitch and it's like bro you don't even have a website you're wild i, I right think now. there's a time and place for both right like you said like there's two different strategies i think for me like you said like when you were windowing down uh like when you were talking previously you were like a lot of people focus if you're just a video producer you're that um where now i've noticed like wow a lot of people do content because obviously it's so easy to like we're creating content right and i think there's a beauty of it but like i think what what comes down to it is like you need to understand all these other things to be able to actually provide not only the value but actually make something meaningful at the end of the day right because mm -hmm. i mean i've i've noticed like when even friends of mine or colleagues and stuff like that like they go into it they like right away they're like all right let's get to work yeah we can make killer videos for you and then you can tell when something branding is not as genuine i wouldn't consider it fake you know but there's different motives behind something you know so i'd rather go into some uh to to a conversation and if i know that that individual which just wants to yell on top of their lungs marketing and advertising i'm like cool like what is your brand is it bold like let's do it you know because then then you can do a distill instead of a say a campaign that's like multiple little videos kind of you know describing your journey and all that stuff and all these cool things you know that people should know about you let's just do a five second like shout it out and then that's going to give you the the attention that you're looking for but i feel like a lot of people just jump into advice giving and then also they like right away they're just trying to like make the flip the quick buck you know and yeah i think that that sucks um, when people don't i think it's also like the way you even court clients you never if you're not asking enough questions and you go straight into what it is that you're providing it just shows that i don't know you're super um it's good to be results oriented but it, it shows that you're jumping the gun and not trying to understand the picture fully and not giving your clients the time of day or not taking the time to understand the landscape fully like I, this is why strategy work is so important and it's why strategy work will never be replaced by like robots because robots is uh, AI is never going to ask you like what's the story behind what's the mission behind your brand you know like AI is never going to make these creative decisions it's going to be um, human at the end of the day when you're marketing to someone it's a very human like relationship building and similar to how Google is weeding out um, all of the like the black hat practices for SEO. I think that's happening in advertising as well because more people more so than ever are transitioning to online shopping. That means CPCs are going to go up. Costs are going to go up. Everything is going to become more expensive. It's going to be harder to advertise online just because it's going to be so much more competitive. So with that being said, that's going to weed out a lot of the brands that are easily replicatable well i don't know if that's the word but essentially like the copy and paste ones yeah like if i can drop shit the same crap that you do and i have the same kind of like positioning or lack thereof you're gonna get weeded out and you're gonna get blown out of the water with advertising so advertising will never be profitable for a brand like that advertising will be profitable for the brand that builds brand and plays long term so mm -hmm. I find a lot of correlations between advertising and SEO in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, Ricky Jean wrote, oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing over here. <laughs> Ricky Jean wrote, <laughs> I'm like clicking the YouTube chat. <laughs> oh, this wine. Uh, with A-B testing, how long would you guys wait to kill an ad copy that's not working? It depends on the amount of clicks accrued. You need a good sample size to deduce really anything. Um, for me, I feel like a solid rule of thumb is 500 clicks, uh, but that varies, you know, um, you just need a solid sample size. You need to think like, I would never pause an ad or an ad set if it's just has, if just, if it just has like 10 impressions, even if click through rate is abysmal, it's just 10 impressions. That's just a small sample size. It's like making a decision because I don't know, someone off the street told you that you should get a tattoo on your face. Like, like what? 
let's 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 build a bigger sample size here and ask a couple of people and get some varied opinions you know before you get it <laughs> yeah so that's the same thing with a b testing and that needs to be your sort of methodology you need to think of a solid sample size before making or have a solid sample size before making a, a decision that's drastic and optimizing i actually have a really cool um well, it's available in my paid media coaching program, um, but Ooh. I have a really cool, yeah, I have a really cool um, optimization checklist, checklist uh, optimizations that you make on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, and what I go through. And um, essentially, everything that you do in an account, I feel like it's A-B testing. You're always testing. Okay. Yeah. And honestly, and I'm going to butt in here because I think we're just not talking about this enough, like in digital marketing world, like ads are, ads are important. Your copy is important, but guys put, pay attention on that landing page. Like I live yeah. like AB testing landing pages almost, or like the websites for a living. Like that's what I do. And mm -hmm. like, I just spend so much time looking at heat maps guys. It's like, it's like I dream in heat maps, but that's horrible. Oh, yeah. You can get out more. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, so, but here's the thing, like for my sample size, my ideal sample size, when I'm looking at these things and when I'm making decisions about like, you know, does this button go here? Does this placement go here? Like mm -hmm. for me, it's like uh, a thousand um, page views or visitors. Um, and that's like that, that's what I use to like make these decisions because like Cynthia said, do, do not base yourself on a small sample size because that's going to throw off your, your click through rates and stuff. So I think we just need to, I need to hammer this down guys. Pay attention to that landing. Page. Hey, yes. That was crazy. I just got Instagram just yelled at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like that's something that I also teach. I think most, most, most of the good ones teach this. It's just, you're in charge of the entire journey. If you need to be mindful of the traffic that you're sending to the landing page and you need to be mindful that the landing page converts. And that's why a lot of the times advertisers create their own landing pages. I used to spend a lot of my time just creating landing pages because I didn't feel like their website was worthy enough to send traffic to specifically for lead generation websites. So just, I mean, that's a second part of the equation. Like, the traffic, then traffic converting on the landing page. In order for you to, so I work with e-commerce businesses. So in order for you to even develop the formula and to project revenue, you need important variables in place. You need your e-commerce conversion rate. You need how many clicks, um, cost per click, um, and then overall average order value. I forgot the, the formula off the top of my head, but, and you need all those variables to, to project revenue. Oh, also, um, monthly traffic on average your traffic yeah. and you can project revenue from there uh, but you need all of those pieces and all those metrics in play and your landing page is a huge part of that imagine you're sending traffic to like a website that looks like it was built from like 1994 no yeah that is my worst nightmare what are you guys what are you drinking Eduardo by the way uh gin and tonic hmm yeah. Classic. You know what I'm craving? I'm craving an old fashioned. Dude, Wisconsin. You got to come over here. Yeah. Wait. Why Wisconsin? I would think. That's that's where like it, I think it gets consumed the most. Really? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, we're also like uh, a very I alcoholic was... culture. I thought it would be like nothing to do, like but... Kentucky or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah, like isn't that where bourbon's mm. made, Kentucky? Even though an old fashioned, that's whiskey, right? Oh shit, what's an old fashioned? It depends. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm the child here, just nodding to you guys, like. Oh, you're 23. Old fashioned drink recipe. Old fashioned. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, yeah, I was right. It was made. It's made with bourbon. Let me share my screen. Let me. Let me. Let me put Sharon on real quick. Sharon, Karen. <laughs> I'm drunk. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine your name know. was Sharon. That's like your evil twin's name, Sharon and Karen. Oh, stop. <laughs> well, I mean, the name Karen nowadays don't have that. No, of, yeah. You should have a backup brand. name just in case. Yeah. Maybe you need Sharon. Maybe Sharon should be your backup name. I'm just putting it out there for you. I'm just trying to look out. Anyways, it's made oh, with bourbon. So this is what it looks like. Trying. The search trends have gone up. 
haven't they? Oh yeah, because I guess 2020 is great. Well, I don't know. That's weird, right? How search trends for old fashioned has gone up. It spiked in 2017. But yeah, it's delicious. It's probably one of my favorite drink in old fashioned. You like a sweet or sour? Um, sweet, but I mean, I prefer sweet, but I'll still drink it sour and I'll enjoy it sour as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Kentucky. Yeah. So bourbon is, isn't bur uh, bourbon like the home of bourbon in Kentucky? Like it's, it was made in Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. Someone in the comments, hook, let, let us, let us know. Ricky says people need drinks this year. Oh, I keep clicking the wrong fucking thing. I'm drunk. Okay. Hold on. People need drinks this year. <laughs> That is correct. That's why we all have a drink. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. This is like screenception. Inception, Cheers. Yeah. Salute. 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 Link, link, Friday link. happy hour. Karen over here with the white claw. She's wilding right now. We we gotta get, we gotta get her up. We gotta get her up. So we need to have you try like an old fashioned. You need to go. Ooh. You guys come to New York. There's a ton of like really great like bars that have like wonderful flights of whiskey and bourbon like great selections no for real though. i tasted some of the best the yeah. best stuff like alcohol wise in new york um just because they I, just I've have, never really tried have, anywhere else so. you have to have like i feel like that's your edge right like you have to be unique <laughs> you have to be unique you have to drink in new york it. you got to deal with those new york winters you have to drink i, I actually i'm it. really only like i drink wine I mean, last time I fucking freaking dogged a bottle of Brugal or whatever. Dude, um, <laughs> I drink wine. I do like Brugal a lot. I drink wine. What's up, Dre? Um, I drink. I drink mostly wine and then bourbon and whiskey here and there. Ricky says, "What kind of site do you guys find hardest to optimize?" Like, I know people use WordPress or maybe Squarespace for their sites and Shopify, even Shopify specifically for e-commerce, uh, even. But which do you guys find most difficult with running? Really, I only muck with Shopify and Word and Webflow because those are the easiest. So, I just work on WordPress. Isn't um, it always like dropping? It's there's always like some crazy. Yeah. Honestly, I can't say that I that I that I'm very well traveled with the CMSs, but I mm. would be open to trying Webflow. I've seen a ton of those ads. I love Webflow. Everything else, like we've I've done through my old agency with clients, so I've, I'm kind of well versed. And I have to say, like I have a preference for the easiest ones, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is Webflow and Shopify for e-commerce. I've dealt with horrible e-commerce interfaces, specifically Magento, and it's an absolute nightmare. And then custom sites, I, I absolutely hate. Like with a, it's the worst. So I'm always thinking, like, how can I make conversion tracking the easiest so I don't have to hire a freaking developer? Right. And Shopify, and even then with Shopify, like I have to hire my brother to do some development stuff. Ricky says, any good bars in Lower Queens? What's Lower Queens? Should I have I no clue. A map? Like, what is that? Maybe the south, the southern. Is that from New York? Like Jamaica? Wait, what? Yeah, no, it is. Did you just ask if it was in New York? Yeah, like, no, aren't you guys from New York? Yeah, I'm from New York. And I said, like, what's the south? Like, Jamaica, Queens? Oh. No, I'm I'm not. <laughs> I'm not as well-versed as I should be. But that, that's the thing. Like, what's southern and lower? Like, I by lower, know. I mean... I'm looking at a map right now, and I guess lower looks like yeah, Jamaica-ish. That's what we're Jamaica. Saying. Oh, you know, I don't really, I don't really be going out in those areas. I went to school in Jamaica Estates. I went to St. John's University. Mm -hmm. Um, so like we had to go to some pretty shady areas on the avenue on the Ave. Yeah, I honestly like I don't know. All I know is like back then. We only went to the Ave because they didn't card, and it was fights every night. It was really ghetto. Yeah, no one goes to. Okay, Dre said it. No one goes to bars in Jamaica, Queens. Exactly. You got to go to like Long Island City. Maybe yeah, some. Forest Hills has some good bars on. Um, what's that main street on Forest? Um, fuck me, I forgot. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Dre says that's where you get shot. Yeah, Astoria is another one. <laughs> facts yo i have so many stories that i'm not gonna share on this live stream on just some crazy things uh, in Astoria? 
Yeah, no, in Jamaica. Because oh, okay. like, okay. literally uh, most of the people that I'm around, freshmen in college, sophomores in college, they're not they're 19, 20. So mm-hmm. the only bars they would get into would be the one on the Ave. And mm-hmm. there was just a lot of crazy crap happening in there. Mm. Just, I'll just let your imagination go wild. <laughs> <laughs> a story would be too much. Where? How is the story too much? Well, then, I don't... Too much what? Then too, much awesome? too much awesome? Too much city? Too much... Too much yeah. greatness? <laughs> too much... There's never too much Latinos. Never too much Latinos. Nah, that's not a thing. No, nah, never. 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 I mean, sometimes, but never. No. Just in my living room sometimes. They get a little wild. So I have some questions <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> Only if a family I want to... Wanna... I want to leave. <laughs> whoa, whoa me and karen last time we live streamed we literally spent like two hours saying goodbye and it was a true <laughs> goodbye we literally just so spent like we're gonna leave now well no we but remember we had before. like one uh ruby she came in last minute she was like don't leave and i was like and so we just, play we just talking about ecuador yeah, we were talking about Ecuador and how you should you should definitely go with Ecuador. It's one of those like low key spaces places because I think everyone knows about Colombia, but Ecuador is like the yeah. the areas that like it's low key. It's really awesome. Did I tell you guys that I plan on moving there? Um, you said more. this a gazillion times. Yeah, well, I don't know about this. I feel like we just met. <laughs> Probably, I think we did. But well, I'm moving out to. Uh, for like three months talks to my boyfriend about it talks to my family about it we just got to pick a day or time i we're thinking around may depending on how this weird vaccine works i'm gonna get it straight injected into my jugular vein and you know you would get it i'm gonna grow like hair in my eyes and shit (laughs) if if for me to travel i'll take it as a suppository you you, you do anything (laughs) at this point yeah so um (laughs) straight into my eyeball um <laughs> plan on living in South America for three to six months. So between Ecuador, Colombia, living there long term and then traveling like weekends here and there, like to Chile and stuff like that. You know what you need what you need to start doing? What's you up? You need to start taking your your speaker materials and translating it, translating it into Spanish. Yeah. Because when you have it ready, honestly, that took me the longest. Oh my gosh. Because I had written it out in English. Yeah. It's like I thought, I was like, okay, let me just translate this real quick. And then I had somebody proofread it and they changed it all up. So apparently it's it's harder than I thought it was. So do that, get prepared. Yeah. So that when you do these things, you're like ready to go. Yeah. That's great advice. That's what I'm planning. Um, my goal is to just do more speaking engagements in Spanish, just better my Spanish, hire a tutor out there because you know they're way more stricter in South America and Ecuador, oh, they'll yeah. smack you with a ruler in the hand. So <laughs> I'm trying to go out there. I'm trying to learn. And then um, also probably going to pitch some investors for this e-commerce business that we have in mind. We don't need necessarily a ton of money. I have some of my own uh, money, but like – some of my boyfriend's family members I kind of loaded and they already offered money before. So, you know, just quick pitch. Let's, see. Let's touch base. Hire a couple of engineers uh, over there to help us like ideate the actual prototype because it's way cheaper, cheaper to hire really, really high end talent out there. Yeah. So we're probably going to do something like that. And then, uh, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. You Speaking about that. What What's up? You want to tell us what it is? I can't, I can't tell you guys right now. I can't before tell you, you Before now. you go in, let's just get her like two more wines in her. And then yeah, 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 yeah. I can't but tell you right now. Though, no, I mean, I'm, still, I'm still researching though. I just have ideas. Like, well, let's yeah. tell us what you're researching. Can- camera accessories, essentially. Camera accessories for content creators. Just making that whole process easier. You know, I don't want to be dealing with fucking mic and whatever i want to know what things easy yeah so i feel like there there needs to be better solutions i think we're at a point technologically where we can get there i just don't know the technology too well but i got money so we'll figure it out (laughs) (laughs) no but it's true i mean oh exactly i mean i think that's the next step right you learn the skill set right 
you get so good at it, you apply it to yourself, then you build businesses with it. Like that's the backbone. Me understanding yeah. advertising and and just like the basis of marketing and business, because working in advertising, I get to work on businesses. So I understand business. I understand business from end to end, essentially. Maybe not so much the manufacturing parts, but I've gotten more involved with my e-commerce clients on that end and even trying to lower man, uh, fees and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, just using all that knowledge that you've then applied to clients, uh, using it for yourself and creating your own business and using the revenue that you've generated from a high income skill set and investing in real estate, investing in stocks. That's, that's I think that's the plan. game. That's literally, that's literally everything you just said. I was like, she just copied me. She literally, you were just read my brain. <laughs> like, I copied you. This is, this is the blueprint. I'm laying it out for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Attitude, you know? I'm paving the way so that you guys got it. Don't worry. You guys are, it'll be a breeze with yeah. Nick. Nick says, how are you doing guys? How's everyone doing in here? Amazing. Amazing. We're doing amazing. How is everyone doing in these four people watching, me included? So that makes three. How are you guys doing <laughs> on a Friday night? Um, all right. I got a cool story for you guys, or cool question, rather. I wanted to go around the table. Let me let me take this out. Karen doesn't have any horrible stories, but mm. Eduardo, do you have any crazy client stories? Like the worst things that happens, like some crazy rookie mistakes? What were they? Um, let me think about that one. I feel you like know, I've been pretty good. I've been pretty good about like, I like to follow with my heart and like what my instincts tell me, my intuition. Um, and I like leading with like when, whether that's like doing work with friends, partnering, doing work, you know, with other film productions and all that stuff. I like to be friends with them before we even get to do work. So if I can't be a friend with you, if I don't know you, if I can't sense who you really are, then the likelihood of me actually, you know, working or like actually doing any sort of like monetary transaction, it's not going to happen. Um, but I mean, I would say rookie me mistakes are more about like, you know, if, if you're good at talking and I get excited about ideas, like I just love brainstorming. I love being able to like, have these type of conversations with friends and over a drink next to, you know, Oh my God, that would be an amazing series. Oh yeah. We should be able to pitch it to that person. Oh yeah. It's going to become great. You know, we're going to be on Netflix and what? And next thing you know, it's like, what did I get myself into? Right? Like, I'm like, sheesh. But I mean, usually those are not even as bad as like, you know, either losing money or uh, I don't know, getting into a bad client relationship. So I still, I feel like I'm still pretty, early young at this um and for the most part like most of my projects have been like scratching my own itches in a way that like i i think that for me i've been able to like figure it out you know so like whether yeah. that's like okay we need cash where can we find it how can we fundraise it how mm -hmm. can we like basically market ourselves market the project to then be able to like get those resources and then actually streamline the resources so that we could actually put it out in in a more meaningful way so it's almost like um, one, I mean, I think even with social justice stuff, like it's so hard sometimes to just even like get all the resources from the get and then do the story. It's like, you can't wait for someone to just hand it to you. You almost have to like go grab it and then find it. And then that's when people start believing in your story in that, like that it's powerful. So yeah, I don't really have <laughs> crazy clients. Lucky you. I mean, um, I'm on the same boat though. Like at, at this point now, I have to be cool with you as a person, more or less. What were you gonna say, Karen? Sorry. So I mean, I don't have like a bad story because I I think personally, I don't think I've had the volume of clients to where I'm like, wow, that was a bad one. But I do have this client that um just weird just like weird the business is weird like the weirdest thing i've marketed which is like this lady is a horse whisperer <laughs> like a horse wait whisperer. What, what does that mean like like actual like asmr like you're horsey like whispering <laughs> no, like, like no 
Oh, like the dog whisperer, like yeah. Sissa mm-hmm. Milan. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yep. okay. I thought she. I thought this bitch was actually whispering in the ear of a horse. Wait, no, but like, oh my no, god, no, that's no, crazy. Wait, wait, wait. But like Caesar Milan, but like on another level though, because what does that mean? What is another because, level? Like, Caesar Milan is the shit. He's one of my big levels to this. Fan. Yeah, I'll, I'm big. He's my fan. I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> 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 he's Caesar, not my fan out there. Caesar, if you're listening to this, hit us up. <laughs> um, hit me up. Hit my line. No, no so this lady, <laughs> so, she, so she talks to horses, though, and she <laughs> identifies any worries in them because, guys, we need to say this. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so here's the thing. So she goes, she goes to these, like, ranches and stuff where these ho- horse owners have a bunch of horses. And there's, like, one horse that has, like, behavioral problems or something. And so she goes up to the horse. <laughs> Stop laughing. And she, like, communicates with it. <laughs> and then she's able to tune into what is making the horse behave that way. How does she talk to it? Like, what does she say? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what she says. But she says she communicates with the horse. And she's able to, like identify the problem <laughs> like a a weirdest, weirdest. i've heard of this mexican term like the curanderas you know what the curandera is right they're like yeah. santeros no basically yeah you know yeah. Or, or like yeah exactly like maybe like, like shaking your ankles and be like oh yeah, yeah you're like they like smell the devil in your butthole and stuff <laughs> yeah they like, <laughs> like con el huevo you they do the whole like limpia thing it's yo like, i had a freaking culandera, I guess you call it, or a santero, maybe. Gave yeah, yeah. my life as a child. That's that's another story for another time. <laughs> Wait, Cynthia, <laughs> tell us your story, though. We want to hear your crazy stories. It sounds like you have something. You know, I don't really have crazy, crazy stories on my own, on my own. I have crazy stories from the agency I used to work at because they would just accept anything that came their way. Yeah. So with the agency, I actually got cursed out by one of my cur- f- first clients. And I was doing like car rental services in Punta Cana in Dominican Republic. And I thought it was a really cool thing, whatever, except I screw up their entire account. And then I didn't have the commu- communication skills to explain like the optimizations I did. And like, I didn't really do it based on historical data, the optimizations. I was just like, well, this is best practice because Google told me to do it this way. Like I wasn't actually thinking critically, honestly. Um, so he had every right. Actually, no, fuck that guy. He didn't have your rate to curse me out, but it was crazy because I was going through that process. And he was like, what the fuck are you guys doing with the account? Like, I literally am bleeding fucking money out my asshole. And we were, and I was just like so scared. I was like this little guppy. Like Aww. at this time, I couldn't even like talk on the phone properly. And my boss was coaching me through the entire thing. Like he was just like, he would, he would mute himself. He was like, I want you to say X, Y, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, listen, client, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like he was basically in real time teaching me like how to deal with um, difficult conversations essentially. And and honestly, it was a great lesson. And How old were you? Oh, I was not even old. I was like 26. I was like like 25, 26. I wasn't, I wasn't old. I'm 29 now. Yeah. Um, Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Did you cry that day? You know, I have a I problem with not crying. I mean- yeah, no, I didn't cry, but it's something that I, you know, I've, I've been exploring in, in therapy as to why I don't cry often. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I'm not like a big crier. I don't really, I don't know. I don't like to. You want to talk about it? Me... I'll start crying now. <laughs> no, if you make me laugh hard enough, I'll start crying. Like it's okay, just like... like yeah, I'll start crying like that. I do that all the time. I do that a lot. I just I'm not a big crier. Uh, even now, like okay, I don't have a problem crying. Like I'll cry when I feel really sad. You yeah. know, God forbid something happens in my family and someone passes away. Like I'll cry. I'll, I'll cry mm. thinking about like oh, really? my loved ones die. Like, but I don't cry over dumb shit. Oh, I cried over dumb shit the other day. So I put oh I I put so much hard work into making this chimichurri sauce. <laughs> oh, I that's put worth so crying. much hard that's work, right? Job. And and the longer that you let it marinate, the chimichurri sauce, the the stronger the flavors become. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah. So I was so excited. I was I was like thinking about it at night. I was like, oh, when I wake up, I'm gonna smell it and it's smell great because I like I finally chopped the parsley a certain way and and all that stuff. My boyfriend puts it in a bag that's dirty, and so that rendered it, you know, garbage. I can't I can't use that anymore. I can't you know not with a 
sound mind. It's dirty. I'm going to give someone freaking anthrax or whatever. So <laughs> I was so upset. <laughs> That's like the first time that I cried. Over, no, I've cried over dumb other dumb shit before. But re as of recent, I, I I like shed a tear. I was like, I worked so hard all that. I shed a tear. Yeah. Other than that, but in that crazy case, I felt like like a buildup. You know how when you feel like you're gonna cry, like in your chest, it doesn't come out. It doesn't come out, but you feel it like all here. You feel it in your sinuses. So I felt it everywhere, bro. I felt it. I felt it in my butt. Like I felt everything. I was <laughs> like, I was like, oh my god, this is the worst feeling ever. Yeah. I felt like I failed. Like this guy was literally cursing me out. But at the same time, it was actually really cool because in real time, this this guy was coaching me on dealing with like conflict management. And I I don't know. He I used like real psychological principles in real time. And I was in it and I and my voice like was really conveying tonality. And you know, so I didn't really uh like at during the time, like I actually really enjoyed the challenge and it made me feel alive because I'm a sicko, but so I didn't cry, but I did feel really bad. And I embraced yeah. all those feelings of feeling bad. I think yeah. the way I approach things makes me really good at what I do. Because even if I feel fear, I'll just like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just do it. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So that was my worst client experience when the client literally called me a fucking idiot and asked me, what the fuck am I doing in yeah. front of my desk? Um, to which I explained I was working diligently on his account. <laughs> And uh, needlessly, needless to say, he he quit. And yeah, but Are I did it. Was he yelling at you in Spanish? No, he was a white guy doing business oh, okay. out in DR. It's a very typical thing. Hmm. Um, that yeah, I think nowadays my all of my uh, this is what I I preach to the freelancers that I work with, and the small business owners and the consultants that are you know, marketing within freelancing, I mean, freelancing within marketing. Um, it's making sure you manage expectations from the jump. It's a whole dance with clients, making sure your contracts are ironclad, making sure your proposals are on point. And I literally just like offer all the proposals that I have and help them build out their own and just making sure that's systemized. Um, so you're wasting, you're off, you're front loading a lot of the work. So over time, it just becomes an easy um, process. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't have those problems nearly as much. Awesome. Uh, Ricky says, you guys ever thought of starting your own e-commerce business on e-commerce store? Yeah, that's the next step for me. But probably Same. that's happening like Q3 of next year. Same. Can't do it all at once, man. I wish I could. I wish I could. Um, for everyone in the chat right now, the five people watching, please like, please subscribe. And if you like, Karen will cry on camera for us because yeah, I, 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 I cry. did not relate at all to your like not being able to cry or whatever. Like, I will cry, you cry right all now. the time. I can cry like this. Yeah. I'm such a major crier because it's it's not even a. I don't consider myself an overly like person where I attach emotion to a lot of things. Yeah, but I think it's like I think it's honestly like a biological thing to where like my my response, like my body, it's like, mm. I can't, I can't like stop it. Like, it's just like, whoop, like a, like a, it's healthy it's though. Cold. It's really healthy. Yeah. And I mean, I've started crying like single tears here and there when I feel sad, but the thing <laughs> is like, I'm <laughs> such a murderer that I literally say I'm feeling really sad right now. And then I'll let I out think, a tear. I think like, they're just dehydrated. That's why they don't come out. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, drink a lot of water. I drink at least um, eight bottles probably a day. What is that? Sixteen. You gotta stop using the single use, okay? Stop single use. Get to uh, yeah, I gotta, Look, you gotta leave it better than you found it. All right. I got Bring a glass it. that I can reuse. Yeah. You know. That's good. I gotta That's get better at recycling and shit. I'm sorry. Sorry, universe. But no, I'm getting. I feel like, yo, you know what's crazy? This is a little bit woo woo, but the better. Like I've been in therapy now for like two years. The more I've progressed in therapy. And honestly, like therapy is nothing crazy. It's just like me revisiting the past and like dealing with, I don't know, like childhood trauma like that everyone has. Um, so, but the more that I've been open and open with my feelings and the better I've become as a communicator or that's a clear core, um, correlation between me becoming a better communicator and just me being better in business Facts. because it's really worked on my esteem. And I think that if you have a really good self-esteem, you're able to be more ballsy in business, be bolder. 
Um, and you're also able to charge what you, what, how you value yourself. So if you, if you're not making a lot of money, it's probably be probably because you're undervaluing what it is that you offer. And it's probably stems from some kind of self-esteem issue. So would, you say that, would you say that's the same case in like, because I've talked to a lot of people that are outside the U.S., like in a, in a country like in Ecuador. Do you think that same principle applies if we were in the same industry in Ecuador, for example? <sighs> that's a great question. You know, can I, I, can I, but I you're from Mexico. Oh, Mexico too. Yeah. Mexico I, I can't, I, I was going to say like, I can't give a real opinion yeah. because I'm not from there. I don't know the land. Yeah, I would say like being someone that doesn't feel neither from there or here. Right. Oh, that's a um, I think starting out, even, even within like my previous profession, I definitely lacked a lot of uh, self-esteem and confidence, even though I was like a killer. Like I'm talking about like when it came to skills and technical, yeah. like murder, you know, like, And I mean, they cried when I left the company, like it was ridiculous, but I think it, it's, it's true. I mean, I, right now I work with a lot of friends out there. Like I still do a lot of like quote unquote marketing within architecture, uh, using that software and creating tools for other architects and designers to use. Mm -hmm. And I hire my friends from Brazil. I hire, you know, like a lot of people that I know that are extremely talented that can use the help. And I like, you know, working with people that I love. So, um, but I found, you know, when, when I ask them, you know, I'm like, I'm seeing it as a business owner, as an operator, like, obviously I want to be fair because you're my friend. We've gone to school together. We have lovely experiences and stuff like that. We've known each other for a really long time, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's also my bottom line, but I also need you to be like confident coming in here. Like, yep, I'm gonna kill that work. I'm gonna own it. And then I'm paying you in dollars. So you better be ready, you know? And sometimes, you know, like, I'm like, I, I don't want to make them feel bad, but you know, like I got, I tell them like, if you work with anybody else, like now you have experience, you can say I work with the, in America kind of thing, you know, like making moves. I'm like, I'm going to pay you fairly because you're my friend. But if you want to get this work elsewhere or on your own with an American manufacturer or something, you better be on it. Like, and that's just it, you know? So, I mean, I've, because of, of just having great friends and great relationships here in the U S they're like, Eddie, yo, like you gotta like, okay, that's great. But what's stopping you from telling the client, like, yeah, it's going to be another 15,000, you know, like the worst that can happen and they're going to say no. Yeah. And, and they're going to be like, well, why? Yeah. And then it's all about the managing the objections and like bringing in and actually having a great conversation, knowing that you're confident. So Like I was, I'm thankful that I had those relationships mm -hmm. that I still do. But even when I, you know, when working with my friends from Brazil and stuff, like, like sometimes I know that they're like, damn, I did a lot of work or like, they'll come to me and be like, oh man, like, what do you think about this situation? This is a fair price. And I'm like, does it feel fair for you now? You know? And they're like, well, no. And I'm like, well, then see if you can get more. Did you tie yourself in already? Like, did they, did you already like undersold yourself? If so, well, on to the next one, double it, you know, like that's what I always say. I'm like, whatever you're charging, double it and get used to it and get comfortable saying yeah. no's because by the rate that you're charging anyways, if you get that one, no, it would like overcompensate all the jobs you said that said no to you anyways. Yep. Like, so my, my thing is like less is more. I charge, I work more exclusively with, with, uh, with a small amount of clients and I charge them more and, and it pays for my time it's just a better use of my time, honestly. And, um, at the end of the day, what I care about more than anything is like my lifestyle and, and freedom in my life and the ability to say like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking next month Q or sorry. Yeah. Next month Q1, I, I want to start dabbling a little bit in real estate. I, I need to dedicate some time to get like a real estate license just to do things right. You know? And like, I, I need the time and flexibility to do that and yep. still make a high amount of money. And it's just a longer term play, but I'm glad I did it. I don't, um, yeah, a lot of people just feel like, I don't know, there's always like this mental hang up um, mm -hmm. with being told no, and it's really not as bad as you think. It's really not bad. It's, yeah. it's the same feeling like when you're, 
afraid of the monster under your bed and then you realize it's just a chancleta underneath or it's just like a shoe it's like it's not a monster it's just a freaking shoe it's nothing that's the whole reason i don't have a bed frame because it's just straight <laughs> matches in el piso you're afraid you know? of el cuco <laughs> i used to sleep on so top of him of el cuco <laughs> ricky says how did it feel the first time you charged more oh man amazing it felt amazing and scary and all the feelings that you're supposed to have when you do something new for the first time. You feel yeah. like an imposter, you feel doubt, you feel all of it. And that's absolutely normal. And you need to lean into it. And yeah. if I would question, like if you're not feeling doubt, if you're not feeling, um, if you're not feeling scared, if you're not feeling imposter syndrome, if you're not feeling all those things, I would question like, are you really stepping outside of your comfort zone right now? So, and then when you actually close it, there's, no, it's like, there's no better, there's no better feeling in the world. Oh yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Like, I feel like you feel, I don't know. I feel like I'm on top of the world. Like, yes. Like, but then for me, it's almost like a hunger of like, what's next. Okay. I just did yep. this. Okay. Yeah. Well that the, the drama is over. It's like, what's the next episode of this story? Like that's, that's mm -hmm. how I, I see it. Yeah. Ricky. It's important to take breaks in between those like wins <laughs> Otherwise, you'll keep chasing that dragon, and then you're like no different from a heroin <laughs> addict. It's important to take those breaks and kind of it, like it's not healthy because you're probably chasing money and not chasing quality projects or quality of life or quality of everything. It's not That's necessarily true. the money. You, you're chasing that feeling that the money brings. Yeah, of course, and it's like it's like gambling. It's a gambling addiction, and I've gone yeah. down that rabbit hole, and I'm chasing yeah. that dragon, right? But it's just like, damn, I really need to take a step back because I'm being like a. a I'm being really hard on myself when I'm just like, okay, what's the next best thing? And then nothing really gets, I'm not excited for not anything. Nothing is satisfying to me anymore. And so mm -hmm. it's important to take like breaks in between that and like really understand like your level up in that moment and then go to the yeah. next level, reevaluate your goals. Okay. now the goal is to do X, Y, and Z to kind of, you know, yeah. Ricky, Did thank you, you for the question, one? dude. Um, it actually, it reminded me of a crazy uh, client story. So I have one. I go forgot. for it. Completely blocked that out of my mind. <laughs> but when I was in architecture, you know, you get those clients that like want to do their projects, need an addition for the home or whatever, but they're coming to a firm and it's kind of like the agency, right? Like they can't afford you. So like your boss will come out and I, fortunately I almost always have first dibs on like any freelance, right? I almost never took it because I was just so busy and loaded with, with the work and after work, I needed to go decompress from the work. So, wow. Um, but I did take one client, I remember uh, vividly. Um, it was his like Indian or Pakistani dude. He wanted an addition from his house. And like he was like, I want to extend my kitchen, make basically my house twice as big. And I want to put a like a deck on top and all these crazy things. And um, you also got to remember that like, I live where like hella snowfall. So, like everything has to be reinforced and beefed up and all that stuff. So, I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I didn't know what to charge him or anything like that. He's like, this is my budget. And I thought it was a lot of money then, right? Like for, for that construction, it was like $3,000 for like an addition. And I was like, wow, like that's a lot of money. That's like what I make in like two weeks or like, you know, like not even. I was making that almost in a month back then. And I was just like, man, okay, cool. And I remember it got to a point where it was so painful that when I was like submitting drawings, I was giving him everything. He would not pay me. Like, uh -huh. like it, it was, it was pulling like teeth to get the money out. So I think he paid me like, like half of it, not even. And I just gave up. I was like, don't talk to me. I blocked them. I was like, I don't want to hear anything because you're just such a bad individual because you're like trying to like, like nickel and dime me everywhere where realistically, like I'm giving you three times as much value right now. Yeah. So that was the one uh, client that, yeah. that happened so long ago though. I, mean, I have like bad situation. I always I, in situations like that revolving money. And I think about what I could have done better. And it's either the question is, or the solution is always, it's a bad client or rather like my like conclusions are that it's a bad client or I should have charged initially and I or should have structured payment differently. Differently. Yep. Yeah. Mm, it kind of sucks. Nick says, Never underestimate the value of getting your time back 100%. Yo, speaking of time, uh, can we schedule something for next week so we can do that um, audit? Thanks. Uh, because you can apply save time anywhere. Say what's in the house. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. What's up? Hi, say what? What's up, say what? Do we know who I say what is? 
Because I no, feel like I say what? what? What's your like real name? Yeah, or- say what? Identify yourself. Do you want us to just call you say what too? Because what if he just he she wants that, you know? Okay. Or they we gotta respect privacy, I guess. Damn. Yeah, I respect respect now. or chick or sis. Or yeah. 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 Guys, question yeah. for you both. How do you level up in your career? Who goes first? Ladies first or not lady? How do you level up? I believe, I mean, I could be a lady. Who knows, right? That's true. You could be Nowadays, it's 2020. Day. Well, it is. Um, how to level up. I believe it really comes down to you personally being able to level up yourself in where like no one's watching to then be able to actually level up in other areas, right? Like Cynthia just talked about it like 10 to 15 minutes ago. Went to therapy, started talking about her past, started learning how to communicate with herself better about those situations, got that handled, and then that was actually be able to bring more oomph to her business, to her other areas in life, right? So for me, like when I began, I was still very like, uh, like I could talk about the subject. I could really, really just talk your ear off. I could, you know, say all the right things, Mm -hmm. but when it came to like, uh, dealing with objections or like, you know, being able to like handle conflict or, you know, just being able to like say no to certain things, like all that stuff, like you almost have to say no to like bad habits, indulgences, all that stuff first to then actually be able to have the time to think and then really, really start aiming all your main mental power to actually get to somewhere. And then that thing is just going to keep growing once you get to that, uh, to that one first level. But I would say that's essentially how I managed to create that like growth hack in my brain um, mm. where I feel like I lived a lot of lifetimes almost because I've always been interested in too many things all at once. Um, so when so going back to the. You would say that what is it like investing in yourself like or your mental. Yeah, I would say first invest in yourself. I but mean, what about, I, like investing in yourself. What is that? Because that could be multiple things. That could be like. Right. Yeah. It could be. I mean, it depends, right? I, I think it, it's hard to have the level of self-awareness to begin to be like, all right, where am I weakest at? Or like, what's the keystone habit that's going to change multiple things that will begin to affect all these other areas in my life? That's what's hard. To that? Yeah. But how do you. But I think when it comes to personal, I think it's just doing it. Like, what does that mean? Because you said it's hard to... F- so for me, I agree. And and the only way to level up is through different perspectives. And that's why I feel like it's important. Like, coaching changed my life mm. you know, for me. So like having a business coach, having a communications coach. Um, for me, also, it's like a factor of like, you either have time or money. So you're going to invest in something or you're going to spend the time figuring it out yourself. I don't have two years to figure out how to be in like researching things and like going to networking events and like practicing, whatever. I'd rather have someone giving the blueprint and tell me exactly what to do. So that for me is why I believe so. And I believe so heavily in coaches because in coaching and mentorship in general, because it's a true, like it, it's, it's the catalyst for true transformation. It immerses you in, in a whole new different environment to whole, a whole new different set of habits from someone else that you genuinely admire that is doing what you want to do. If I want something, you know what I do? I hire the person that's doing it. Simple as that, you know? Um, The way to level up in your career, it could be, I think everyone's divided into, like one person is divided into many different facets, right? But the main things I think we can say is like mindset, skill set. Right. And maybe like discipline, maybe. Maybe that ties into mindset. I don't know. But for yeah. I noticed for me, the level up is like more, it's not so much in the tactical. I need to be told and I need to be given the direction, right? Mm. Uh, how to move financially and all the areas that I'm not good at, you know, I need to be yeah. given direction, but it's really like buckling down on my mindset. And that's what I really keep sharp nowadays. Um, I'm very, very particular of the kind of content I consume. I'm very particular about the things that I say about myself, all the thoughts that I have in my head. I think a big level up for me has been, um, along with um, coaching, is um, meditation, breath work, working out. These have been big level ups for me as a person, as a marketer. It's like that hunger and that curiosity for 
always, always being on top of my shit. Like I'm literally, I truly believe in being 1% better. And I'm always, I'm reading an article on something marketing related every day. This is my whole life. I live and breathe it. So it's not a day that I'm falling off, even on my slow days. I'm slow, but I still do it. Yeah. What about you, Karen? Karen? Karen. So for me, I think it's a difficult question to like tackle because I feel like at different points in my life, leveling up meant different things, you know, like at, True. at this point, you know, I think before when I was starting as a freelancer, it was more of this, like, like you said, mindset communication. Mm-hmm. And now I think my most recent level up and there's going to be so many level ups, right? It's like, it's a never ending process of like, here's this step. And then I went this, and then I went here and then I went there. So for me, I guess to, to think of it more specifically, like I've, I've been um, learning more on the tactical side. So, and that's the whole reason I, I chose to go, to go into like this, like uh, an organization because I wanted to get an appreciation for the technical side of what we do every day. And to like be able to learn, okay, then how does this engineer think about like what we do? How does this designer think about this? Like broaden your perspective and have that influence my day-to-day work. Like that to me has been, I guess, a level up. And I know that's very like vague, but to me, it's been more of a move recently of like being able to level up um, tactically with the work that I do and yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be with like the, the communication skills. Whereas I think before when I was a, as a just 100% a freelancer, that was like my main thing. But I think right now I'm in a stage where I'm, I'm gaining a huge appreciation for like all the little, the wheels and, and the machine that make this thing go round, especially at large organizations. Because I know we're, we're used to talking about direct to consumer, maybe lean e-commerce businesses and things, but that's not all there is to the world and so to learn how huge complex organizations organize themselves and how they how these processes work to to like rally so many people hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people across a single like mission that to me is like fascinating so i I think for me my most recent level up has been yeah more on the like tactical side of marketing and, and i'm like broadening your perspective within people of different fields, right? And I, I don't know, I, I I just, I feel like when you talk about, when you were talking about Cynthia, like, um, you know, you have either, either time or money. Right now, I think I'm in the mindset of like, I feel like I have a lot of time. And so I feel like al- almost, I feel like things are going to come to me. And that's the way things have been working for me, where they almost like manifest these skills and these like i guess realizations so yeah i guess that's my take on on the whole like money versus like time thing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that all makes sense i think that you it's super important so a lot of people want to neglect this and what they want to neglect is buckling down and doing the work doing the work that means every day working at being a better marketer in some kind of way the thing is like our industry is changing so rapidly. So I'm at a point where I'm just trying to catch up with the changes and then maybe be, maybe like fine tune on specific uh, adjacent skill sets. Right. Mm -hmm. So Dre says he loves your mindset. Karen has a wonderful mindset. I agree. Um, so I think the best marketers have like adjacent skill sets, like an MMA fighter. Um, what we do is very layered. It's, analytics it's statistics it's art to some extent it's um copywriting it's uh it could be video uh production you know it's it's very varied um writing all of that so what we can do is actually build up like so i'm at a point where i'm building up my adjacent skill sets to essentially in my head I'm taking over the world. Like, obviously I'm not doing that, but <laughs> I'm not like pinky in the brain or anything, but in my head, I'm like, okay, how can I get even better as a, cause me getting better as a person is also me leveling up as a marketer 
and naturally my daily practices, I'm always working to be better as a marketer, always talking to other paid advertisers, always keeping in myself mm. in the loop. Like that's just like a natural practice. So what can I do that's extra and, and let, um, an extra tier on top of that. And that's getting better at sales communication, uh, communications. That's getting better at education, actually being a better instructor, um, being a better project manager, getting more organized, being a better delegator. That's a skill that I'm working at hiring people. And, you know, that's you were big. talking about how do I inspire like a team? Like, how do you inspire a team? Whatever. I'm have a hard time inspiring just two people. And, you know, it's tough. Especially with you. Remotely. That's the thing, you guys. We, we talk about. My, 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 the people that I, that I, that work for me or that I, oh, no, I'm just messing yeah, with you. Not you guys, so. <laughs> <laughs> just That's true. I'm having a hard time there. No, <laughs> but it's like, it, it's hard, like keeping that to be an entrepreneur, to be a marketer is to be like a little bit. It's like, remember the T shaped marketer I was telling you about, Karen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's like another ascension to that T level marketer where you're now business owner marketer. And it's like, it's, the key is I like think, leadership and the admin and the project management and the QA. And then the, the top part, the line is, uh, dig, you know, like all digital marketing facets. I, I, yeah, I remember you talking about that. And I think it's, it's, I think we need to even take a step back from this because it's like, we're judging ourselves at, at this point in time with our businesses, with our careers, but it's like this, what you're doing right now may not necessarily work in the future too, though. Like that to me is crazy because the way you inspire two people that are working for you is not the way you inspire like 50 people working for you. Right. Or that's a stepping stone though. That's the stepping, right, it's a stepping stone. Yeah. But I think at the same time, because I've been, because I live in startup world and tech world, like so much. And I always think about this, like what makes the difference between a successful startup founder and the CEO that inherits his business. Right. Can that CEO yeah. jump the step of doing the founder's work, I think a hundred percent. So I don't think necessarily like you, you need, this is a, the progression, but it's just a thing to, to keep in mind that what makes the CEO successful isn't what makes the startup founder successful. And I think using that same concept and applying that in our careers is important to keep in mind and take a step back. Yeah, that's actually a really great point. And there's a saying and it's the, t there's a, the team that took you from zero to a hundred is different from the team that takes you from a hundred to a million. It's a different team. Yeah. So yeah, I completely agree. And that's why when I get to a point where, you know, like then I need fresh perspective, then I need to hire someone else that's that trains or like that, you know, or, or a consultant that deals with companies and helping them, whatever. Yeah. Um, but my perspective is always, I'm never afraid to reach out for outside help and, and I'm never willing, I'm never afraid to invest in it. And I think that that's the biggest thing. Like if you want to call yourself a marketer and a consultant, what you do is an investment for a business. Like if a business owner hires you, you're an investment, you need to be willing to make the same investment for yourself, which is a business. And, um, that's incredibly important. It's in a huge mind shift. Like I'm hiring a designer for $5,000. Honestly, that's not a lot of money for, for uh, not a flex. But in my head, you know, at first I was like, oh my God, that is a lot. Like, oh my, do I really need this? Or am I sure? Like, you know, but, uh, you know, I had this weird hang up like of dropping 5K and I'm just like, this is an investment for my business. Why am I like being weird about it? And like the first time I can do some shit like that without really hurting at all, like why am I being weird about it? And then I mean, you know, the thing, that just means that you're a healthy person, though. I think it means you're healthy. You're 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 debating things. You're like you're, you're putting things on a straight. But I felt like it coming from a scarcity kind of place. Like, I think oh. you should, you, if you know yourself oh. very well, like, you know, like, oh, is this worthwhile, you know, mm. for my business? Like, I knew I needed it and I knew I needed to make that investment to take it to the next level, level from other kind of marketers that are copying me in a way. Not necessarily. Oh this is the second time. This is the second time you mentioned this. We need names, Cynthia. No, I'm not naming names because oh. it's. It, it's honestly imitation is a form of flattery and I take it as flattery mm -hmm. and I refuse to take it in a petty way because I just Cynthia, can't do that to myself. <laughs> I got a quote for you. One of my, uh, one of my greatest friends and I honestly, I consider him like damn near a mentor of mine, like another brother. Um, like, uh, he says like, 
you know, people can like duplicate, you know, or they try to duplicate, but they can never, or like they can try to imitate, imitate, but they can never like duplicate, right? So like you bring a different perspective, just being who you are, your variables in life, what got you there. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be you. They can't do you. They can't clone you. And then like, like, you know, there's still all the information and all the like trauma and all this thing and like the way you hardcore about things, you know, like it's the little quirky things that are not going to be able to be, I mean, they can copy and paste your website yeah. and they still go into that meeting and they still going to mess up. Right. Exactly. And I think you're so, so great because literally my business coach, she like gives me his shit like all the time. He's like, yeah, use it yourself. And I'm just like, why don't you like, I'm not going to copy this. And he's just like, no, I really don't care because you don't, you literally don't have what I have. Like people, you know, it's like, it's true though. He's it's true. And I'm just like, Oh, well fuck. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And it's the same mentality that every, like you just said mm -hmm. that everyone should really employ. So it's not necessarily, I'm thinking from like, Oh, I got a different, it's like, I want to make this investment because I really want to stand out. You know, like if there's more copycats, that means I'm heading in the right direction and I'm excited for that. But yeah. I just want to get to a new level now. Thought like I just I just need fresh perspective. Even with design and and what's great is that she is a strategist first, and then she implements the design. And I I really admire her work. She's great. I actually have to do some work for her, and I totally fucking forgotten is on my tip <laughs> shit now. Anyways, um, yo guys, if you're the five people that are watching right now, uh uh, uh please like, please subscribe, please file follow Karen, please follow Eduardo. Where can they follow you, by the way? Instagram. What's your handle, bro? <laughs> it's hard, but it's like E double D Juarez S. Type it in the chat. Yeah, I'll type it. Yeah, type it in the can chat. I type it in, the, in this chat? Yeah, this chat actually leads to the YouTube chat. So you can type okay. it in the chat. You too, Karen. Karen, where can they find you? Are, Karen Giselle, no? no? Can I can I paste my my LinkedIn? Um, I think, okay, try it and see if it turns into a link. If not, just send it to me. Send me the link and I'll paste it. Actually, okay. just send me the link and I'll send you your LinkedIn. Okay. Is that, is that um, in the private chat or did that actually work? Oh, no. You can send it to the real chat, but I'll just send it in the oh, chat. I don't think I have it. But yeah, yeah, that's everywhere. I mean, that's all my things. Um, I'm actually pretty bad at like having my LinkedIn on point, having all that stuff on point. Y'all are blue, right? We all got work to do, right? Um. I'm just a doer. I like doing things. Yeah, I get that. But you know, if you want to get to the next level, market, you got to, yeah, that's, you You I can't know. just do, you can't work in your business. You have to work on your business. I know. Yeah. I know. And um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. If you guys are into like woo woo stuff. Yes. Like you are woo woo means like annoyingly spiritual. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Well, I'm not like that annoyingly spiritual. Like to be honest, like I have to add a level of practicality to it, or else like I'm just gonna laugh. Like Karen was talking to me about some horse whisper that shit had me rolling. <laughs> yes, I don't believe that. No, I do believe it because there's dog Wait, whisper too. I don't even no, believe that. For real. And wait, I didn't add that I have this part where she talks to horses that are that already passed. No, that has a <laughs> I'm glad you left that out. I'm glad you left that out. It has a, a whole new <laughs> element of loqueria. Oh, my God. That's Curandera 2.0 right there. That's, That's right. Chiria right there. Um, For real. What is – okay, so what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, when you build your personal brand, there's no – like, there's no negatives to it except for time. But you have to invest the time – I mean, like – I don't know. I feel like you working on yourself. It's like you literally working on yourself. You literally yeah. working on your brand. Building, building yourself. Yeah. Like what you're aligned with, who you're serving yeah. and what you're providing. You getting that clarity and then showcasing it to the world. Um, it's only attracting opportunities your way. Oh, it's no. never going to take away from you. Now, if you are working on your personal brand and you're trying to front and pretend that you're something that you're not, I think that that has diminishing returns and you're ultimately right. going to feel bad about yourself. Nice. Um, but if you work on your brand and like the true essence of brand, which is understanding and having the clarity of who you're serving, what you're providing and, um, your specific mission and your specific lens and worldview, like mm -hmm. it should feel awesome. You're going to only attract awesome people. That's how I met. That's not how I met Eduardo though. So it's true. Work on your personal brand. You bum.
<laughs> I'm trying. I'm actually about to launch soon. Like I'm no, not yeah, no, I'm just kidding. It's good also like to have downtime to work on your work on your you know your work too. Yeah. Yeah. No, and like literally, so I actually just moved to this apartment um by myself. Finally. Congratulations. That's like a really big accomplishment. It is, it's huge. And like literally the sole purpose, and like everybody that was like, oh, so like blah blah, blah. like how can you like moving? Like I had it so good and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I had it good. But I needed time to like, if I need to work four days straight without sleep, which isn't healthy, guys, but you shouldn't do that. But like, you know, sometimes you just get that like energy, that like woo woo energy. So you just like boom, 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 like slapping the keyboard, getting the edits out, getting the workout. I never I recommend like, something like that, but sometimes I mean, you do have to pull in an all nighter here. I, I, I haven't. Know, I feel like I needed the space, you know, where I, I could feel, I could be unapologetic about how I, like, if I'm like, excited about it or whatever so like yeah. i moved back in october so like i was like this quarter i'm gonna build the site i'm gonna actually put the portfolio together again and all that stuff because again like in a sense i had to rebuild and the way i kind of started this whole journey was like all i wanted to do is like share people's stories like and that's i mean cindy i haven't brought it up but like i really want to interview you in my show and all that stuff but like oh, that's the thing. Like I kind of, it kind of started that way, just kind of being selfless, you know, like not really trying to be about me or anything like that. It was about the stories, like really pushing community out, really trying to inspire, motivate individuals. And now that I've worked with, collaborated with friends, collaborated with other people, now I'm like, all right, I gotta start building what what I now acquired. So it's taken a long time. I think that's really important, but you definitely need to have like, um, you know, I think it's awesome to have whenever I do a project and I, I think Karen disagrees with this. And this is, I think actually, if you were to think this way, Karen, I'd be curious to, to what happens in five years. Like, I don't see where it would hurt you. In fact, it would only help manifest or let me not use that word because manifest insinuates like <laughs> pop up in the fucking air. It would allow you to have you would work towards that goal and it would be that much more likely. Mm -hmm. I would implore you to have like some kind of a, um, a three-year goal or a three-month goal, like short-term, meet intermediate and long-term goals with every project that you do because the goal is to have clarity with that and the goal is to, you know, because eventually here's, a, here's why I don't like all um, – I never have been a fan of like falling crazy and madly in love with someone or I've never have been a fan of like, I don't like overly feeling or under feeling like I like just being normal or overly like I, I just want to have five hours of like really intense work. And sometimes I have that. Sometimes I'm just like, I just want to spend like two days just working this out because I'm so excited about it. But here's the thing with every ebb, there's flow. So I'll get a stream push. Like I'll be like, ah, I need to finish this one thing. And sometimes I need that to come up with new ideas. Like and sometimes yeah. I strategically put myself in that place. I get that. But sometimes you have, you need a, when that happens, you immediately crash and you just ruin your sleep pattern for the next four or five days. Because let's be real. I'm almost 30. I, I, I drink too much one night. I feel like shit for two days. It's horrible. Oh my God. I remember that avocado meme you said uh, you 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 posted one time on like drinking as a in your later later twenties, and I was like, "What? That's what happened?" Yeah, I still right. can't believe this. I still. I'm sorry. Continue. I'm sorry. Interrupt. Well, well, when you're when you're hungover, it's essentially a dehydration issue. So whenever I do that, I make sure that I I take amino acids, um, yeah, electrolytes, and I drink a lot of water. It's not just water; it's like the electrolytes in the water that help mm -hmm. you replenish well whatever i still feel like shit and it's like damn why do i want to you know like because like well, two weekends ago i drank like a lot of wine or no it was last weekend i drank a lot of wine and the next day i was like i feel so bloated and it just like ruined my whole funk and i didn't want to get into that work mindset so that's why i don't like the extremes mm -hmm. because i rather like my thing is one percent better every day one percent better every day i am in this in the long game and i want to i want to build yeah um, Long, sustainable growth yeah sustainable growth that's that's my thing i want to do things that are sustainable over time because i know like that'll win in the end and yeah. life has shown me that um you're using the compound the compounding interest right to your effect like absolutely the compound effect and that's the only thing i abide by i don't trust 
um, anything that's overnight. Like I don't trust it. Like I'm just like, if it can come overnight, it can leave overnight. I don't trust anything like I that. Know. That's why I've never like felt like any like intense love affairs. Like that shit is like in the novellas. Don't, I mean, I have been young before. I mean, it's still young. I'm young, but I have been dumb, but it's like, okay. Yeah. It's a, and that's it. And, like, I'm really here for the, the real shit, you know? Yeah. So, that's why I don't necessarily condone that, but I understand like I need it sometimes in order to come up with new ideas and to get to the next level. Sometimes yeah. I need to like binge on anime sometimes and just like veg. Like this morning I was watching anime till like 11 and I took a call at 1130. You know, like sometimes I just need like to like more chill, you know, and then I go hard at night and but I don't I cut it off at like 1 p 1 a.m. That's it. That's the max or else I oh get like hot. <laughs> huh? I said I'm an old person. What, what, you, want, what do you want from me? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Where do you, when do you sleep? At five in the morning? Cynthia, when I you, feel like no, hell no. When I, do you, I'm trying to go to bed right now. Oh like, no, no, no. On a regular night, my bedtime. Oh, my bedtime. <laughs> I sleep like 12 a.m. I'm in I'm in bed at 12 a.m. But sometimes I push it. Like if I wake up later, then I gotta work later. Like, you know, yeah. some things you have to execute on. Um but yeah, my I forget what I, I digress. I'm the wine's kicking in. Essentially, I don't like you know too intense peaks. I really like to level things out. You know, that's I think I think that's I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's the inner ENTP in you coming out. And I think that works for you beautifully. And I love it. I just the that inner ENTP in me wants chaos and craziness oh. all the time. Oh my gosh, but I am an ENFP. That's like I thought you were ENTP. EN, I'm a mix of ENTP and ENFP. But then um, I'm sorry. Uh, so am I actually. I, I they it comes up like seventy thirty. So thirty percent it comes up ENFP. But here, okay, mine is the opposite. Mine is it comes out. I'm like more the ENFP and less the ENTP. Mm. So okay, but yeah, I I feel like. <laughs> I feel like my white claw's kicking in now. <laughs> Let's go. You can see my hair. Every time my hair gets like, you just know. You just know. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, I think I remember. Oh, yeah. What was I saying? Something about sustainable growth and things. Yeah, compound. Compound. Oh, 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 no, no. I lost it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Get it. Get it. What was the thought right before saying that? Um... Something about growth. Growth. <laughs> um, Guys, watch this live stream to hear us, you know, think really intensely while we're on alcohol. I think I only had three shots of drink in my whole life, says Sky. Oh, wow. All right. I mean, I would say I, I'm a social drinker. I don't like to, I'm not going to drink while I'm crying, like in the yeah. bathroom something i'm just it's a social enhancer yeah it's a social thing yeah I really think things. <laughs> just keep it at that um <laughs> jesus so what were you saying right before that and i was like something with all right we're just gonna let it slip that's all right yeah, I'm like <laughs> i don't know where I, I could go all the way back but i don't know man we were talking about extreme work we were talking about sleep deprivation we were talking about all this work and then you were talking about like you know being able to be one percent better like every single day compounding that are you winking cynthia it sounds like you're winking, I like you're winking. i am i'm twitching <laughs> <laughs> that's how i think karen stop making fun stop wink shaming me um all right whatever we'll just let it go anyways what would be uh some final thoughts here what what would be um let's go around what, for you guys Oh, go, go, go. Go for it. Do you guys see yourself doing this for the rest of your lives? That is a great question that I was heavily contemplating. You first, Karen. Karen doesn't know what she's doing, though. I'm 23 years old. I'm going to do what I like to do. So as of right now, <laughs> I I do my, Okay. Karen's I, hanging out in Carajo. She's just... You know, huh? She's hanging out in Carajo land. She's just doing SEO. I'm, I'm liking, I look, I love what I do. If at one point, because, we're, okay, I'm a marketer, right? But I remember what we were talking about because I was talking about you, how you're very like, you're just in the moment, which is a beautiful thing. Oh, 
Okay, so are we gonna go back? I can't answer. Okay. Oh, no, you can answer. You can answer. It actually ties. It actually ties. So I think that Karen, you should implore yourself to think more long term. To think short goals, intermediate goals, mm. long term goals, five plus goals. You should have all three. Now that ties into yeah. what you're. Go for it. Go. I think just for me, it's it's a hard pitch because the industry itself is moving. So to me. Oh, thank you, Ricky Jean Marie. But oh, he wants to be just like you when he grows uh, up. But here's the thing: like in two years, in three years, the world may be completely different. So to me, I I don't know. It's like I know for sure that I'm gonna be doing something that I love for the rest of my life. But if marketing, the industry of marketing moves to something else, because it's always changing, and I see myself doing like liking to do other things like let's say i want to go into like i don't know ux design or i don't know like into maybe an adjacent field like i'm gonna mm -hmm. pursue what i like to do as long as like i i enjoy the day-to-day -day of what i do of marketing then i'm gonna continue doing it for the rest of my life even if it does change if i enjoy going with it and going with the flow then that's what i'm gonna be doing but um of course with side projects because i always do side projects but, you know, if not, then it's okay. Like to me, yeah, I think I'm very in the moment. And, um, but I don't like to make impulsive decisions either. Like if, mm. if I decide like, hey, you know, I just don't think marketing is for me anymore. Or I, I, I prefer this other business that I'm doing. Like it's going to be a very uh, analytical, very, uh it's just a long, it's just a drawn out process where you're thinking about like, you're putting all the pieces together and you're balancing out the pros and the cons. Like, I'm not going to make any like rash, impulsive decisions, but I don't know. As long as I like what I'm doing, that's what I'm going to continue to do, I guess, in a way to boil it down. How, do you, do you find yourself aligned with your purpose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do? What is your purpose? What's My life purpose? Karen right now? Huh? My life, let's, no, I'm saying let's life coach Karen right now. What's your purpose? My purpose is to, number one, above like my career, it's to basically have the torch in my hand or this white claw in my hand, this white claw, this torch in my hand to where I can show like the people coming after me, like you know, here you hear here's where you go. Wow, the white claws really kicking in. <laughs> like where you go next. <laughs> Direction real quick. <laughs> like because I think because it's this older sibling thing, I think that, way. that mm. ties in a lot with like my I guess life's purpose, which is like I I wanna obviously like everybody says that like leave the earth better than you found it. I feel like I get tired of hearing that, but like when I think about my siblings, when I think about like the little kids that don't have opportunities that grow up in like in impoverished households or in broken households, like above all else, I want to be the person as that serves an, as an inspiration for them. And how do I do that? By doing what I love and showing them that it is possible to tie your career with something that you do every day and to truly i don't know exude just positivity and optimism no matter what your situation is that you're going through i, I think i've lived that i've truly lived this this thing of like no matter what situation you're going through no matter how bad it gets staying like optimistic not like not like delusional but like <laughs> optimistic about the future and I think if that's something I could pass on to like my siblings, to other people, like that's, that's my life's purpose. Mm. For me, it's pretty similar. I would say as also the first born, like I'm the oldest cousin, I'm the oldest sister. I really, I take care of my brother. For me, it's like also paving the way. Right. But it's also inspiring and empowering people to be audacious to be unapologetically themselves for me my goal 
and you asked me like, what do I plan to do this for the rest of my life? To some extent, yeah, I think marketing is extremely important in business. I plan to be in business for the rest of my life because I, I aspire for true independence in every way, shape, and form. Being myself 100% unapologetically yeah. to be able to say, fuck you, fuck this. I don't want to work this. I don't want to do this. I don't need it because I make more money on doing my own thing. You know, like that, that ultimately is what I want for myself and for everyone around me to not mm -hmm. have to ever ever feel like they have to belittle themselves just because they're co the color mm -hmm. of their skin they have to downplay it uh, they can't they have to straighten their king the, their curls i know kinks is not a, a recommended term for that they have to straighten out their curls because they they feel like bad um not embracing it or they like just don't feel they feel like they have to code switch or like i feel yeah. I want to make it a place or I want the world to be a place where you could be unapologetically yourself. And I think there is a way in which you can get rewarded for that. So I aspire yeah. for true independence and to make the most amount of money I possibly can in true independence and pave the way for other people. That's, that's the goal. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. What about you, Eduardo? Um, I mean, similar in the same lines. I mean, I think um, it's, it's funny, like every, every conversation I have with either like first generation, older siblings, Latinos, um, whether you were born here, you know, you're multiple generations in, or you're like first gen like myself, right? I think in a sense, we all we're carry all this, gen. This, this sense of responsibility, right? It's almost like it was, um, and I mean, I see this with a lot of the stuff, like the stories that I'm telling you right now, um, that it's unfortunate, right? And it's, you talk to these people and they have this conviction about themselves. Like, I don't know why the universe chose me to be the barrier of this story, but I'm going to do this. Right. So along the same lines of, you know, I want to make sure that like everybody around me feels empowered. I want to make sure that like I can help as many people as I want, as I can, you know, and at the same time be, be rewarded by, you know, whether that's, you know, be able to be able to do the things I want kind of when I want, you know, be able to have, like the abundance that I need actually to sustain, actually grow where I need to grow. Um, I don't really at the moment don't tie myself to monetary wealth anymore because I know that's a hindrance to the, to, to being able to be self-confident enough to say no to things, you know, cause like if you, if, if you need it, obviously go, go right ahead. Right. But then also embody that like one day I'm going to be like Cynthia and I'm not going to need, the, the money like right away and be able to like invest in myself, invest in my business, be able to actually grow that sense. And I mean, for me, it, it really started there because that's where I feel like I needed to be almost like kind of in a sense, like how you were speaking about how you almost want to empower your younger self. Right. Like for me coming from another world, not knowing my parents didn't no guidance, nothing is just like figure it out. I have to, I'm, I feel like I'm barely starting to live. You know, like, like where um, I love how we both, you guys, I almost kind of like split, right? Like between you two, because I feel like I have the time, but I also have the financial confidence to go get it and like be able to make that like high impact value, monetary value to myself. Right. But right now I'm like, all right, I could do that. I know I can do it. I got some on me. Let me see what else I can do. So along the same lines, though, for the most part. Um, but yeah, like right now I'm in this moment of like, all right, how can I begin to be a little more selfish, right? Like grow this, grow the business a little better, like make it sustainable, maybe get one or two people under me, you know, like be able to like, like Cynthia, like inspire, motivate, make sure like we're all growing, get it to that 10, maybe max level, and then be able to then invest in enough residual other things to have multiple streams of income where like i'm not worried if my bills is going to get paid or if i have enough runway like i know i'm gonna be set for 10 years you know yep that's so. the goal to to really just set yourself up for success no matter what and mm -hmm. i'm almost like i have to like pinch myself sometimes i'm like what my my account looks like that mm -hmm. like it, it's a weird thing that i've battled as of recent like it's the same thing as seeing myself as a boss like how I don't know, these, like, my assistants, like, uh, I, it's just, like, this weird thing. And I'm just, like, I guess I'm going to, you know, be a boss now and, like, tell you that was wrong and 
can you like do it right the next time? <laughs> like, this is how I would do it. And so it's like, it's these weird like hiccups at first is awkward, but then I found myself moving into it very naturally. And I think like, I, I think the fact that like I'm an older sibling and I've always paid the way and I've always been kind of like pioneer mm -hmm. in my own right, in my own little bubble, I'm not, I'm not saying like the world. And, you know, it's it's been very natural to me, but there's always like weird hiccups and like mental hangups with it. But I, that's literally everything I do, all the services that I provide, at least in the coaching front and the educational front, is everything that I wish I had growing up. Everything I wish I had in my journey, all the support that I wish I had. If, if I could, I would offer these things for free, but I'm just not at that point yet. Mm -hmm. And even then, if I offer it for free, it would be contradicting what I truly believe and what you should be doing yourself. Right. You know, so like at the end of the day, like money, and this is where I get woo woo and I might lose some people and I'm, you know, whatever money for me is really an energy exchange. It's like, how committed are you to that thing? And when I'm super committed to something, like I'm always going to think like, okay, what's the return on investment on this or what can be, what are the po potentials? What are the possibilities? I'm not going to, that doesn't mean I'm going to frivolously put down 10 K and hire someone that I absolutely don't need. That's not going to, you know, move the needle for my business or whatever the case is. Um, but instead I'm thinking like, you know, I'm just doing, re being really intentional with it. And so everyone that I want to work with me, like, I want you to be intentional too. Do you, you're going to waste my fucking time or what? Cause I'm, I invest a lot in people's success. So I take it personal. Um, mm -hmm. so That's yeah, cool. everything I do is literally because I wish I had it myself and I want to do more of that. It's really fulfilling work, but I also don't want to ever rely on it monetarily or financially. Yeah. I think you know, I want to rely on other things. I want to rely on my own business. I'm, I'm like most of my revenue comes from client work, like uh, working with businesses and then maybe 30% from coaching. But I honestly, I want to transition all the way to just, that's just my products, right? Education, maybe 30%, but mm -hmm. most of it is coming from like my yeah. e-commerce or my other investments. That's I know you're logical about it, but what's stopping you from being a hundred percent coaching? Um... What I, I don't know if I want to do that 100% because I don't like investing. I, I don't believe in putting all your eggs in one basket ever, oh, yeah. ever you know. Um, you know, I was having this conversation with my friend Dre, who's I don't know if he's in the chat, but a lot of so I, here's kind of my spiky point of view with people focusing on just one thing. People tell you, like, if we're, in order for you to succeed, you need to focus on one thing, you need to do that one thing. Well, listen, I don't have a nine to five job. So I'm, I have the freedom and the independence to literally focus on several different things because that's how my brain works. And this is my personality. This is my values. So if I want to focus on real estate, learning stocks, scaling businesses through advertising and marketing, um, it's just about my commitment to excellence. Like it's not, yeah. I'm not scattered because it all directs to one thing. And I'm also not delusional. I know it's not going to be overnight. I'm thinking three years. I'm thinking five years. I'm not thinking like overnight type shit. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. making like I'm doing the things that I have to do in the present in order to generate a certain amount of income for my lifestyle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To save a certain amount. But then I'm also doing things that are long term that are paying my account like 10 years from now. I'm paying and giving my and feeding my kids years from now, you know, and, and, yeah. and sitting in their bank account years now. Like mm -hmm. I'm investing in things that I know that that's going to pay for their college if they ever decide to do that, you know? So that's how I see it. And I can, I'm a multifaceted person, so I can do multiple things. So if I want to also spend a portion of my time investing in culinary arts, because I find that extremely fascinating. It's a passion that I've always wanted to do. And Same. I want to do that. Exactly. So I'm going to fucking do it. Like, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to live in the like, Oh, I can't do it because my nine to five is stressful. Like, no, I'm doing everything on my own terms. And that's oh. my, that's my next level. I will never, yeah. ever stop marketing. I will never, ever leave advertising because yeah. it just becomes an integral part in literally everything I do. Um, mm -hmm. but there, that's for me is the next level and the next three years is me applying yeah. to just my businesses. No one yeah. else the consulting. Yeah, well that's it. One thing I wish I like, I don't regret many things in life. I mean, I don't have, I don't think I have regrets really, but one thing I really wish I, I started early was like learning sales and marketing, um, Too. which is like, I feel like I'm barely starting to do. I mean, like I was in it, but no one told me like, Hey, you're marketing. Like, you know, so um, if I, I, I feel like since I was just so like blinders mode, you know, in a way, like I was doing one thing, and I did have the nine to five. And I think that was a culture. 
um, now that I'm like able to be authentically me in a sense, like where I can, I plant a lot of seeds, right? Like even with content creation, like I'm like doing this, like this is the motivational thing. I'm social justice movement. Okay. I'm, I'm doing branding stuff. I'm video storytelling for small businesses. I'm trying to like now see how all these things combine and, you know, like I'll help, you know, my friends with like Ecom, I'm helping people with nonprofits and all that stuff. Like I'm just like all over the place, but like now I'm seeing like all those seeds are starting to sprout into big things, you know, like, um, I think it's almost like you said, like if you, if you have that kind of like that attitude, that determination to like, it's not even willpower, right? Cause your willpower alone will never get you there, but it's like having that, like, all right, it's gonna, it's gonna take a while, right? Like yeah. be able to like project that out, work on it, keep never kind of, it's almost like having a lot of faith in something, right? Having that belief that you're going to be there in a way. Um, in this it, case, people see that. Yeah, but I think in this case is actually prioritization. It's knowing yeah, that, okay, no, true. in this quarter of my life, you know, I break things down into quarters. So in this quarter of my life, this is 70% of my effort. This is 30% of my effort. Or this is 50% of my effort. This is 20% of my effort. This is 20% of my effort. This is 10% of my effort. I think it's really important to have that clarity because then you can end up where you're at, where you're doing a little bit of things at once too many things at once which right you're not getting a lot of passion yeah so as long as you have that you like you need it, this it's chess like you're willing to sacrifice some pawns to just get at a closer right. um strategic point to the queen you know like so they mm -hmm. do a specific play to get them at checkmate so it's like that's the same thing how i i visualize my life and i i make chess moves everything i try and do now is extremely intentional and strategic so i'm thinking okay you know I can I can't invest a hundred percent of my time in in mastering the ukulele and culinary arts right now. That would not be smart. That doesn't add to my overall career plan, my goal. Like the same thing with storytelling. This is what I tell my boyfriend because he's truly an artist, and and I think you and him have a lot in common with with videos and and, mm -hmm. and just the way you guys think in storytelling. Well, sorry, but you can't invest. You know. 100% of your time making movies that don't have a, an immediate ROI because you have certain a certain lifestyle to maintain and you have certain yeah. goals right now. Yeah. Does that mean that you can't invest 30% of your time in it? In fact, I encourage you because that 30% of the time that you invest in something that you love fuels everything else. Everything else. So you need that. Like I I noticed that when I'm really like hon I've been honing in on this one fucking apple pie recipe and trying to get the crust really right. I'm like getting everything. And even with me, like I got a meat thermometer. I, I just upgraded all my knives too with how you cut things. Like every little thing matters. And that makes me a better marketer because I am super, in and, and just in business in general, because I'm super intentional about every which, every which element that is at play in the overall yeah. campaign and the landscape, whatever. So I carry those things into what I do. And like that level of excellence, I don't, I'm very upset when something comes out wrong and you know, I'm not upset with anyone else. It's just like with myself, I'm not going to cry. I'm a, whatever. I'm just like, I need to do better. And that's the same, like the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So mm -hmm. I try and carry that into multiple things and I try and maintain a level of excellence in er a lot of areas of my life. And I kind of like guide that through, or that's channeled through my passion, my curiosity, all of it. But I digress. You need to you need to prioritize those efforts, or else yeah. they will run you. Yeah, no, that's yeah. true. And, and I do that a lot as a creative. Like, oh God, you should see my tabs right now. And I constantly have to be like, "What's priority, Cynthia?" Like, my to do. Like, I have I have a to do list on Notion. I have like an overall to do list, and I have a daily thing that I'll just write out. And then I also have my board for like quarterly projects too. Like, mm -hmm. it's all over the place. So sometimes I just need to be like. What are just three things I need to work on today and everything else is auxiliary? And so I got to prioritize that or else yeah. you, go crazy. Crazy. you do nothing. That is the story of my life. ENTP <laughs> life, bro. ENTP life. <laughs> Eduardo, you should find out your Meyer Briggs personality test is really I, I have it. I have it, but honestly, I can't remember off the top of my dome. I like, feel like ENFP. ENFP, you think? Yeah. I feel like he's ENFP or yeah, ENTP. Hold on. Hold on. No. Do a quick search right now. Yeah, type in like 16 personalities because you probably yeah. took that test and you'll get it's you my email. email. Yeah, type in 16 personalities and it should pop up like your results, ENFP.
Hey, what's the J for again? Judging. Mm. Judging versus perceiving. So perceive judging meaning you are very you enjoy rules, I believe. Yeah, you're more structured, you need rules. Um these are ty- these are people that are better that thrive more in a structured environment like a job, like a 9 to 5, whereas perceiving is very um <laughs> You uh, like to break rules, essentially. You're thinking of ways in which you can color out of outside the lines a little bit. That was my favorite test. Go ahead. Sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> what I'm, are you? I'm, a, I'm a INFJA. Okay. That's well, what I, I, knew. I knew it. I knew it. You, see, you knew thought it. he was introverted? I didn't think yeah. you were introverted. Yeah. I can see that. Okay. So intuitive. Oh, sorry. In- introvert, intuitive, feeling, judging. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I thought. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't think that. But yeah. um, <laughs> Drayshawn said Eduardo is INTP. That's what I thought. I, well, no, I thought ENTP, but. No. Dre is INTP. He's the logician. Is he? Yeah, he's he's a he's a brain, yeah, and also like he's the type of dude where he like yo he's all about the data. He's like yo bring up the Carfax every time. I'm like bro, there's no Carfax for this. Like chill out. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, I make this. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm all over the place. I don't know. I'm a unique case, but I can I can I can't see his Karen Karen as I don't know, or maybe I can. I don't know. Judging, I I so would have thought that you're. Not J, but P. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's weird. It, then I, it's funny. Like, I don't really. I think this is cool, right? No, it's just one facet. There's other ways to test. Like, there's other things at play. Yeah. Like, also, yeah. your decision making. Have you heard of the the social styles and decision making? No. Uh, we can go over that right now, really quickly. Let me just bring it up. It's actually really interesting, and it's great to know. And my friend, um, Kevin Yee, put me onto this. You should follow his channel. Um, why it's really great to know. It's great because you want to understand how people make decisions. Mm-hmm. And um, it's good when you're handling objections and depending on the kind of clients that you work with as well. So let me share my screen. Let me, let me see if you can see this. Can you can you see this? Or it's just like, oh my God, you can't see this because I'm not sharing my screen. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. We'll now we can see up. it. Yeah, we'll see if this will pop up nicely. Ah, great, 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 great. Okay, so these are the social styles. Essentially, this is like a quadrant, and yeah. this de- this delineates how you make decisions. And this is what's used in like really big consulting firms um, mm-hmm. when you're working with certain um, clients, and you find that they are more of an expressive style decision maker. Well, then you want, you know, that these are kind of the worst people to work with actually, because they change their minds constantly. I know. So it's the worst. One of, one of my worst clients, they were, it was a husband, wife, duo, not the worst. They were great clients. It's just they were very difficult. Um, mm-hmm. One of my most difficult clients is what I should say. One was expressive style. The other one was analytical style. So I had to like give them different reasonings for things. For one, I had to bring up data and I have to bring up like charts and shit like that. For the other one, I had to literally like, oh my God, I had to be like, hey, dude, you're jumping all over the place. I kind of had to be more firm with them because they're so expressive. So I had to give them direction. Yeah. Um, so this is how like this this uh, social style um, chart or quadrant uh, shows you how people make decisions and how you can navigate um, tough conversation with these types of decision making styles. Driving style. Driving, uh, it's called something else, but I think I think it's called decisive amiable um these are like really friendly people they're super fun they're like a dog they're always wagging their tail these are great they're very easy to to sell um analytical is very hard to sell they need to see data they need to see reports and things like that expressive Mm -hmm. they're horrible because one minute they're here the next minute they text you like oh can you pause that campaign because i'm still thinking about it or whatever the fuck and then um decisive people are very much like yeah let's just make a whatever i I just want to do it Let's, let's make a decision yeah. So a combination of these two are probably the the best in my opinion. Like somewhere like here. I find myself like on what well, on this angle here. 
right here. Oh, okay. like this space. You're in this space right yeah, here. Like, like driving and what's the other one on the lower uh, Same. left? Same. Uh, the lower left, amiable. Like yeah, fun. amiable. Yeah. So like I kind of find myself on those. I don't know why. Um, mm -hmm. But I do have a lot of analytical friends. And I think that's where I get some of that um, myself. The goal is to be able to conversate with all of these different styles effectively. Mm -hmm. And Karen, this is actually great in like a corporate environment when you're working with like decision making. Oh my decision gosh. Makers. Yeah. I was like, like while you were describing this, I was like, oh my gosh, these executives. Okay, this person is this, this person is this, this person is this. Like, wow. <laughs> Yep. This is how you talk to them. And I'm like, you can, I can send you this link. <laughs> There's a ton of other, uh, resources on the chat for anybody else too. Yeah. Oh, sure. Here's a link for everyone in the chat. Resource. It's an excellent resource. Like learn about it. Um, like I said, my friend is a sales guy. His name's Kevin Yee. He has a great YouTube channel and, uh, he put me on and this really helped him out. And he learned this from my other friend who used to consult at, um, one of those like big four consulting firms, he has a crazy story. He like quit his like almost seven figure job just to like, cause he had a heart condition and it was too stressful and he just wanted to like fuck off and be a digital marketer. <laughs> Honestly. Cool. Yeah. I, I met him actually through Rich. I met him through Rich. Eduardo. Oh really? What's his yeah. name? Uh, Tom. He actually teaches like the. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, f I mean, I, I figure because he's intelligent as hell. Yeah, Tom's my dude. He's awesome. Like you can tell, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were we going to say, Karen? I cut you off. I was thinking, have you guys noticed that a lot? Because I, I haven't, I met a lot of these type of people like consultants and stuff, like just freaking generating money, like you're just pooping it every day. <laughs> Like there, those exact same people are some of the most unhappiest people. I think I've. Yeah, I've he, he'll found. tell you. Yeah, he'll tell like, you. It's insanity to me because coming in as an outsider to this to this world of like freaking, you're making so much money that is it's in in a job, like, and for me to actually like meet these people and see the negativity and see just the the talk like toxicity was like such a big eye opener when I when I went to San Francisco and I think it's like we always hear about this it's like yeah money doesn't make you happy but like oh my god mm -hmm. not until I met these type of people I'm like yeah it made me I think if anything it made me reaffirmed in what I do and it's like yeah like mm -hmm. it, it, I don't know it's just it was such a such an eye opener yeah yeah agreed um that's why, man, fortune really does favor the bold when you, but you need like serious internal strength and good self-esteem to like pave or go into environments where no one has ever truly been before and like make it your bitch. Like to, to like you said, Karen, like I don't, I'm not necessarily delusional. Well, to be in the space, you, you have to be delusional. Like that whole mm -hmm. negative self-doubt that I used to hear all the time. Literally, I said, oh my God, I had the worst self-esteem ever. And, you know, it came from like, oh, a ton of shit, right? And literally every time I hear like a little even, oh, like an even whisper of self-doubt, I literally, I tell this all the time, I Kanye West that bitch. Like I literally turn around, I tell myself like, yo, I'm the shit. Like I, I feed myself literally only crazy delusional positive things. And in my head, I think I'm the best thing ever. And I think it's important. It's important. I don't know if that's real, but I'm being delusional and I'm going to fully lean into it. <laughs> we can all be delusional, guys. But I think it's important not only that, but like literally the people that you surround yourself with. That is like yeah. so freaking important yeah. because you could be trying so hard to do these, like to make this a practice, right? Like eliminate self-doubt, blah, blah, blah. But like if you're truly in, in a negative circle or a circle that isn't going anywhere, like all that is going to the trash. Yeah. I, yeah. Your environment is everything. That's mm -hmm. so true. That's why it's like, it makes me sad that some people just can't get out of their environment. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, that's yeah. why it's important to like build your own environment. Like for me growing up, I, I lived in a pretty stressful home and dealing with like my, my, 
one parent is crazy. The other one was dealing with a lot and, um, and like dealing just live growing up in a broken home and impure instability, whatever. My escape was always like books, like mm -hmm. Harry Potter and shit, like <laughs> Captain Underpants. I wish there were smarter books that I read. I read some smart books. Um, I remember I was really obsessed with like Bram Stoker's Dracula. Like what else did I really like? I love like fantasy books. I still like, uh, I never read all of George R. R. Martin's, um, not a Game of Thrones, but a Song of Fire and Ice. But I read like the first three. I remember I was really into that shit. I I'm into like fantasy shit. Yeah, cool. and the reason why is because I would like world build outside of my own brain to like escape. Honestly, yeah. yeah. And now I like to work. <laughs> it's like almost like a coping mechanism. Like I I agree because I had my my other my own outlets as well, and it's like that's what keeps you afloat. You know, while the time it's literally just it's just the time to pass though, right? It's like temporary so it's like what's going to keep you afloat while everything while the shit's going on yeah for me now it's not necessarily what's going to keep me afloat but like what brings oh. me joy like true joy yeah so it's like i had to like work through all of those blocks though because sometimes i'm like you know i'll do i'll deal with an emotion and then i'll cope with it very wrong and in, in a way that's more detrimental to like my future self rather so now it's like, I'm like, what brings me joy? Well, playing, you know, working every, working hard. I love to work and I love the people that I serve. Um, but then also like taking some time to play the ukulele and then also taking some time to watch some anime and like. Can yeah, we do a duet there. one of these days? I have a uke. You have a uke? Yeah. yeah. You know what I really want to play? Um, Baby, it's cold outside. Okay. It's the we'll most creepy that. song ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was like listening. I was like singing the song, and I'm like talking it through. It's like I ought to say no, 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 sir. <laughs> oh my god! And she's like, hey, say what's in this drink? And I'm like, oh wow, wow, this really is like suspect. <laughs> but let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I need to get better with the UK. I was thinking about taking lessons. We'll see. <laughs> like there's a lot of things i need to learn on my own and i'm just being lazy too but yeah, yeah. I, Yo, think, I think that sense of convenience though and and just being able to like put your money with your mouth i, I think it's really powerful though too <sighs> facts that's true oh it gives a big sense of like self accountability you know yeah that's true oh fuck i, I wish i was more like you <laughs> i'm more like I'm more, yeah, I'm more like, oh, I'll learn it by myself. And it's not even like a, it's not even like a thing that we're like, I'm like, oh, I can do everything myself. It's more of like, I want to self-discover it, you know? That, that too, though. Like, I think I it's that. that too. Yeah, I love that too. Like, that's not a bad thing. It's a great yeah, thing. It bring, that's it brings me. In. It's awesome. But I think eventually you, you crave, per I think... Right. So the same way you don't want to advertise in a vacuum, like you want to have an omni-channel approach, you want to tie your efforts all together, whatever. It's, I see the same thing with yourself. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to just be good to my standards. Like my standards, I want excellence, like divine excellence. Human standards no longer interest me. That's me and my delusion speaking. With the ukulele? With everything. Okay. <laughs> like literally with everything. So I don't think I'm good, but I'm sure to an average person, like I'm like slightly above. Obviously, an average person can't fucking play the ukulele. But, I, you know, in my head, I'm like, I have two sides of me, like the Asian parent and the other one's like, I'm I'm the shit. I'm Kanye West. Like, I have two sides of me. They battle a lot. So that's, that's another chat, though. Huh? I'm like, that's a New York confidence. You kind of have to have it. Yeah, but then you also also, you also have to have that kind of like, I don't know. So I think I told Karen about this, but what, what David Ogilvy, who's like the father of advertising, right? He has this uh, one um, theory or not a theory, I guess, like um, uh, something he calls divine discontent. Essentially, like someone asked him, like what, push him, what pushes him to create such great work? And he mm. called it like, divine discontent, meaning like... You can be okay with your work, right? You can you can have like that human level of like, right. oh, not bad. Where are you going? Yeah, but at the same time, it's like you're shooting for something that's ungodly, like something that's over all right. human expectations. Right. So it's never it's not good enough. But you really need to yeah. battle that. Like you need to 
balance that with like esteem and all that stuff. It's a it's a dance that we all play as a yeah. entrepreneurs. But you yeah. know, with that being said, I'm gonna wrap it up. Y'all look like you're fall asleep. And yeah, so I need to run to the bathroom, guys. That's that's my that's my scenario right now. <laughs> Karen got to run. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you, both of you. We'll connect again. We'll do this again. Course, and even course. offline, we'll do this again. Definitely, definitely. Thank Peace, you guys. guys. Peace, everyone in the chat and YouTube. Peace out. Take care, guys. Good night.